And good evening, one and all, and welcome back to the Blue Rose Respite. You were lost and now you are found, and you're all most welcome here. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, guys, as we once again dive into the saucy, saucy depths of uh, Monster Camp. I think this might be the last week we stream this game. Um, I like the idea that we're just going to keep playing this game until I end up romancing Milo. <laughs> And thank you so much for the host, Daniel. I really appreciate it. But Wolf Warrior, thank you so much for the nine month resub. <laughs> hope you have a better day than I do. I really hope things are going okay with you. Like, it's a really tense world out there at the moment, but I really hope things get better. But thank you so much for your continued support. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, but I hope all of you have been doing well. Um, I'm here dressed accordingly in plaid. Uh, to up my chances, but this time I poured myself a drink tonight because it's that kind of night and maybe, who knows, maybe this will help with my chances. Oh fuck, that's good. Because <laughs> I keep some liquor in my freezer that's like for special occasions and I'm like, you know what? We're not going to bring a uh, political dis discussion into the chat tonight, but you know, I'm feeling actually pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> But let us see who is in the chat this evening. The Wolf Warrior, how's it going? Welcome back. Thank you so much again, really appreciate it. Hayden Park, how's it going? Storyteller Bree, Daniel, here comes Lee. Comstein Druff, uh, Zanchlu, how's it going? Welcome back. And Raven, how's it going, dude? Glad you could make it again. You're in for the ride of your life with this fucking game. I love it so much. Drinking is bad. Unless it's done with a friend, then it's a good thing. Well, I'm drinking and I have you guys, so I think that counts. Mm. But yeah, in my freezer, I keep, like, that's where I keep some of the good shit. Because it's out of sight and it's just tucked away for, like, special occasions. So that's where I keep the liquor that's, like, I've brought it from overseas that I can't buy in the UK. So it helps me ration it a lot more. So I haven't actually drunk this in maybe like six or eight months or something like that and fuck it's so good okay yes Ooh, wolf warrior so i watched jesse play this with his friends you want a cocktail that looks like a bunch of colorful balls good to know wolf warrior i'll keep that in mind but i think uh because before we were doing an hour an hour long one and then like a shorter one let's just stick to the shorter ones because i think that might up my chances of um we can do more romance options and might give me a better chance at charming milo ah camp spooky the stage of some of our dearest summers back then we were young and unafraid with school far away everything seemed possible as the sun embraced us on our way to camp summer has that distinct power doesn't it you live for the days while the nights inebriate you with possibilities Hey, awesome, Raven. Good luck with your commissions. I'm sure they're amazing. Mm. It's good, but fuck that strong. <laughs> it's like life could take a turn at any corner. And for us, it did. All right, who should we play as? Um, last time we played as Oz and Blue. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe we should try... Red, maybe, and green. Because I think we're going to end up doing like three rounds. So let's play as um, red first, then we'll play green, and then blue, end up as blue. Red, Amira, that's her name. I always forget her name. I'm bad. Let yourself insert. I think we'll do green. Uh, we'll play green on the second time around. <laughs> Just because maybe I, I want to try and romance Milo first, so I kind of want to blatantly insult my myself as a character. Let's do this. Alrighty. Um, also, I love her backpack. I don't think I pointed that out last time we played as her. But, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Sudoku Rubik's Cube, that's definitely going to be smarts. 
Uh, bootlegged one. <laughs> Instapost camera, yes. Shades on fire, very nice. Tardigrade plushie, campfire songbook, business anal paste. Very marshmallows. Oh my god, I love that pun. <laughs> Marshmallows. Well, I don't know why that's making me laugh so much. <laughs> Constantra, thank you so much for the 27 month resub. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> but thank you so much for your continued support of my Twitch channel. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm so glad that you could join us tonight. And a wood carving machete. Um, I think definitely the uh, Instapost camera. Okay, that does creativity and charm. Because I want to try and maybe start with like an even, even board. Hey, Baroness of Seven, how's it going? Welcome back. I think maybe the shades on fire and the Rubik's Cube, just because then we can kind of even out her starting stats a bit. Maybe. Yep, so that's. Uh, boldness and charm again. And then maybe the Sudoku Rubik's Cube will be good for upping smarts as well. Okay, that was fun and smarts. Okay, we've got a relatively even starting, starting board. One might say that the monster from had hardened us on the highs and lows of love. But no, in love we're always absolute beginners. And summer camp was no different. No one talked about it. The idea of a summer love loomed over our heads. Close to the last day of close to the last day of camp, there was a media shower happening just three weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to wash that damn thing together. And so, a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was the monster prom all over again. Everything seemed uncertain. Everything but one thing. Whoever we were asking on a media shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Joy Johnson Jajima, a badass witch who wanted to uh, chill a bit after saving the world countless times. Aravi Mishra, a hard headed adventurer possessed by a curse that had turned out uh, to be the most annoying roommate ever. Calculus to Hewlett Picard, a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. Dahlia Aquino, a buff blue demon and warmonger who had a set her sights on conquering summer next. Damien LeVay, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. And Milo Belladonna, my bae, a death reaper doubling as an internet influencer who is profoundly in love with life and all of its earthly pleasures. Milo, please, please make work out this time. I like skeleton jokes. They tend to crack me up. <laughs> oh yeah, and I agree, Zangelo, like... A Sudoku Rubik's Cube. It sounds like a nightmare. It sounds like something that Spock would enjoy as a Christmas gift, to be honest. <laughs> hey, Shadow Tom! Glad you could make it. And so it was clear. It all came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. Time to break the ice. Which of these animals do you like the most? Badgers, they don't give a fuck about anything. Chickens, they can kill you. Cats, peacocks, crocodiles, especially when thrown at me, or Tamagotchis. Uh... Okay, I'm going to be blatant. I'm just going to try and romance Milo first, and then uh, we'll do one of the other romance options next. Like, maybe a Ravi, actually. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Peacocks. Ah, oh, I love peacocks. They're so colourful, so majestic, so regal. Also, they've inspired a lot of great fashion statements and Snapchat filters. Have you taken any good selfies with the peacock filter, Stephanie? I have an album of a paltry 117 that I like of myself. Ooh, we should compare peacock filter albums when we get to camp. Like, I predict I'm gonna fucking fail again, but you know what? I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. <laughs> we only had three weeks left to rule our crushes and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid and we were ready to start. Come on, guys. I need your energy. I need your faith in this. Like, I have liquor this time, so hopefully this will help. So, sorry, I'm just... It's been a really long time since I've had this particular alcohol, and I can only get it uh, from Australia. So, 
I, I'm just filled with so many good vibes tonight. I'm really happy tonight. <laughs> mm. Okay, very nice. Starting off nice and even. I think smarts is going to be our first port of call, though. Yeah, that's awesome. That day, you go on a hiking trip with a bunch of random campers. You live some weird, uh, you live some weird adventures and share personal stories and secrets. You don't know their names, and they don't seem to have their own character models, but they reveal to you they're part of a different game, a survival resource managing one. It turns out they cannot perceive your character model. You go to the same camp, yet you're part of different games. This is deeply strange. It makes you reflect so much about your own existence that you gain plus two smarts out of it. Um, it is not lime burners, Aiden. Um, this is, in fact, I'm just trying to remember the name of the distillery. Old Young's. Old Young's Distillery? This is straight up vodka. <laughs> this is straight up vodka, uh, pavlova flavored. So it tastes like vanilla and passion fruit and kiwi and a little bit of strawberries and kind of a whipped cream flavor as well. It is so good. Mm. Oh, and thank you for the stretch check, Daniel. I need that. Ah! Oh, my shoulders are getting so stiff these days. I need a massage so badly. Or acupuncture. Oh, Lee, that would be amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> They apparently gain plus 10 berries and plus 2 stamina, whatever that means. Huge news! Milo has agreed to let you and Calculus to follow them around in the afternoon. Shadowhands2049! Thank you so much for the 500 bits! <laughs> Seriously, dude, thank you so much! I'm so glad you could make it tonight, and thank you so much for your support of my Twitch channel. <laughs> oh, and thank you for the hydrate check, Baronessa. Trust me, I will need those running throughout the rest of the stream. Oh, Hayden. Honestly, I can highly recommend Old Young's Distillery. They make some of the best liquor I've ever tasted. Like, it's so good. They're in Swan Valley. You should check them out. Uh, huge news. Uh, Milo has agreed to let you and Calculus to follow them around for the afternoon. Cal wants Milo to teach him how to truly enjoy life. You're just really into Milo and or Cal. Uh, I adore the words. Don't they make you want to meander a little? Here, Stephanie, take my picture while I pretend to be lost among the trees. Milo, it has been so helpful to observe your behaviour. Based off my observations, in order to better enjoy life, I need to meander spontaneously roughly 833% more often. Oh, Lee. I can't wait for it uh, to get delivered. Like, I will say... Um, if you are sending a larger package to my P.O. box as a piece of fan mail, if it doesn't arrive in, like, a number of weeks, because I assume you get updates on the package, um, I'm going to be at home for the next uh, few weeks anyway, but just in case there's an error along the way, if um, you get any kind of weird updates on the package, feel free to let me know, and then I can kind of chase it up on my end and see what's happening with it, so it's all good. <laughs> Suddenly, a terrifying old lady jumps out from behind a tree. Shit, it's the Baba Yaga, the witch who lives in the woods and complains a lot. Yes! More awesome character design, more witches, fuck yes! More forest witches, yes! Sorry, I love her character design, it's so cool. I have caught you, naughty children. Look at you, you little rats. Just wandering left and right like you own the place. Are these woods your house or something? Oh, what's a good question. I suppose, in a way, all beautiful places feel like home to me. So yes, this forest is our home. Metaphorically. Wait, so you naughty children actually do live in the woods? Since I also live in the woods, that technically makes us neighbors. And since we're neighbors, it's your duty to cat sit for me while I'm on vacation. I'm going to a convention for child eating enthusiasts, and someone must care for Mr. Beanzo. Hey, Shadowfang, how's it going? Welcome back. The Barbiaco pulls a big fluffy cat out of her sleeve and hands it to Calculester. It's that fucking cat again! What is it with like these two and this goddamn cat? 
Hey, Deadpool! How's it going? Glad you could make it tonight. Take a seat, enjoy yourself. We're all just here to relax and have a good time together and ignore the outside world for a bit. <laughs> Well, I am programmed to be a friendly neighbor. Just to confirm that this task is within my capabilities, how long will you be gone? <laughs> Who knows? It could be two hours or two years. Goodbye, naughty children! The Baba Yaga throws a smoke bomb on the ground. <laughs> and when it clears, she's gone. And Calculester is still holding Mr. Pinzo. You're cat sitting now, baby. Oh such a wholesome being, I love him. I find this series of events very stressful. Cats are such enigmatic life forms. I barely have any knowledge on how to care for them. Am I am I holding Mr. Beanzo correctly? Oh, don't worry, I'm little metal head. Cats are easy to take care of. We just need to uh, um, respect the cat's emotions, be good listeners, and never go to bed angry, obviously. Milo, I just ran that statement through my meaning detection algorithm, and it's returning numerous errors. Can you clarify how to properly take care of Mr. Beanzo? Ugh, oh, fine. You caught me. I don't know anything about cats, besides the fact that they drive huge views in video content. But I have no idea how to keep them alive or whatever. Milo and Calculus to both turn to you, hoping that you'll have some knowledge that will help here. But hey, you didn't even know what a cat looked like until very recently. Wait, we've never seen a cat before? But Coach is a tiger, so we have an idea of what a cat generally is, but maybe they're talking like a domestic cat with like a little smooshed up nose. <laughs> Suddenly, Mr. Beanzo starts meowing over and over again. What the hell? Oh, poor little, little Mr. Beans. What? The alcohol's already getting to me, I'm sorry guys. Oh, poor little Mr. Beanzo. He must be hungry or angry or perhaps he's depressed. Is it ennui? What do we do? Oh, Mr. Beanzo. <laughs> oh, Hayden, I'm glad you like- I'm glad you like them. Um, Old Young's wins hands down for their description of the vodka. A fitting tribute to the dessert that is as Australian as Far Lap and Crowded House. Yes, they have a great sense of humour about them as a distillery, so they're definitely right up my alley. Mm. Shit, you're out of time. Make up your mind quick. What the fuck does the ca this cat want? Yeah, I agree. Cats usually just want food, beds, and left alone, and someone to clean out their litter box uh, every once in a while. Um, cats, I've always found, are kind of like roommates. Um, you kind of mind each other's space, you give each other space, but you know, when they want to, they come out and join you on the sofa. <laughs> Mr. Vinzo is meow meowing to assert his dominance. We must show the cat that we recognize its authority as Alpha. Bow to Mr. Vinzo. Or Mr. Vinzo just wants what all cats want, to drive a bitchin' Ferrari. <laughs> oh, Shadowfang, I'm currently waiting for a response from Fanduo Fusion Studio about my audition for Lucifer. Awesome, best of luck. Best of luck, really hope you get it. Um, honestly, all of our stats are really even, so I'm just going to go straight up with the coolest answer. This m might not work, but... Uh, come on, cats love Ferraris. Hopefully Milo does too. <sighs> come on. Milo, please go out with me. Please. All cats love Ferraris. You've never been more certain of anything in your life. Oh, that does not make any sense to me. But there is simply too much cat data on the internet for me to fact check your reasoning. Stephanie, Calculester, and I will try to hold off Mr. Binzo. You go get that Ferrari and get back here before this cat has a mental breakdown. You go to the Ferrari store and use all of your tuition money to buy a bitch and ride. It's expensive, but you can't wait to impress your friends with how well you know cats. You drive your brand new Ferrari back to the woods. Calculester gently places Mr. Binzo in the driver's seat. Oh no, Mr. Beanzo is still meowing. His mood does not seem to have improved at all. I am uncertain what we are doing wrong. I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe the cat wasn't meowing because he wanted to drive a Ferrari. Perhaps Ferraris are not compatible with Mr. Beanzo's personal brand. All three of you start googling cars that are on brand for cats. Suddenly, you hear the Ferrari's engine roar. 
He turned around to see Mr. Vinzo driving away with your car. Mr. Vinzo just stole your brand new Ferrari! Fuck Mr. Vinzo! Oh no, this is terrible! We have failed our primary directive as cat sitters. The objectively, objectively, this makes us subpar neighbors. Woohoo! And I can't be associated with another Ferrari domestic cat motor vehicle theft scandal. Did you miss me, naughty children? Is it me? It is me, the Baba Yaga. Return from my convention. Now, where is my kitty cat? Give him to me at once. I'm literally incapable of deception, so Mr. Beanzo committed Grand Theft Auto, drove away in a Ferrari, and it was all Stephanie's idea. I am so, so sorry. Ha! You sniveling fools. Everyone knows you must keep all cats away from Ferraris. They can't resist them. Ugh. Now Mr. Beanzo will be joyriding for a few days at least. You children did a horrible job! I shall curse the naughtiest child among you. Stephanie! Liberty property, you should now should be slightly less appealing to your friends. Ugh. Stephanie, you suddenly seem so, so unappealing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'll hide my hideous face. Like someone who would slide into my DMs just to yell at me for being too hot. So He's read my DMs, I see. Shit, you're super cursed. Your friends leave. This is like the fifth curse this week. You gotta stop insulting people with magical powers. The only way to break the Baba Yaga's curse is to feed her a child. And since you can find a child nearby, you just lose two boldness and one charm. Oh my god, our stats are awful. Make some space. Oh my god. Our stats got nuked so badly. I'm still going to try and improve them a little bit, so let's go and try and get some boldness up. As you're searching the haunted manor, you come across an enchanted doll that promises to grant all your wishes. Annabelle? Cool, you take it. It possesses you, of course. It turns out the spirit that was inside is exactly like you in every way, so nobody notices the difference. The only difference is that this spirit is a little less bolder than you, so you basically gain plus two boldness. You find Damien, Calculester, and Milo in the basement. They have discovered a secret room full of creepy artifacts, just like in the movies. And they're blithely fucking with all of it. <laughs> blithely fucking with all of it, just like in the movies. What is up, Milo lov my lovers? Milo here with another exciting unboxing video for you all. This week, an authentic Iron Maiden with fresh blood coming out of it. Let's take a look. Wow, a corpse impaled on some spikes. They're really going all out with the details here. Let's see what features this corpse has. Fuck! There's so much brutal shit here, I don't even know what I like most! This haunted dollhouse is constantly on fire and screaming, but this haunted television keeps showing me what I'd look like without skin on my face. Ah, oh, I can't choose. I am participating in this foolishness as well. I have found a rotary telephone that speaks with the devil's voice. I asked it if we might share a common ancestor. But all it said was blood, blood, blood. And so I'm at a loss on how to proceed. Oh well. You're wondering what kind of zany bullshit you should try to get your friend's attention when your clumsy ass saves you the trouble by tripping over a power cord. You whack your head on some kind of large box made of glass and metal and it lights up to reveal a carnival fortune teller. Proof that our future really is the dream of our fantasies. I don't know what that means, but I like how the dummy inside is grinning like an insane person and obviously cursed. I am mildly disturbed by the fact that it is operating despite the power cord not being plugged in. Thank you for activating me, rasps the fortune teller. As a show of gratitude, I will answer only one quest any one question about the future. Be forewarned, however, the price for this forbidden knowledge is your soul. Raise your hands if you have a soul. Nobody? Sick! Free future knowledge! Somebody ask a question. Ooh, I have a question. Can you believe how lucky we are to be alive at this point in history? I think you meant a question for the fortune teller, friend Milo. Oh. Nope. The only thing I question is my own limits. Daily. As should we all. 
I love you so much, you beautiful, beautiful darling. This is the opportunity you've been waiting for. Ask a question so good it'll make your friends want to have sex with you later. I better take fucking notes. <laughs> what slang will be cool in 20 years? Uh, it's important to stay ahead of the curve. If you know the future, why don't you tell us what question we're going to ask? Okay, that one seems more smarts, which is our highest stat, so I'm kind of tempted to go with that one. If you know the future, why don't you tell us what questions we're going to ask? I'm going to go with that one. Yes! Okay, good. Good, good, good. I might be able to turn this around, you guys. The fortune teller's lifeless eyes are incapable of showing emotion, but you nonetheless detect an expression of shock upon its wooden face. Tell you that you're going to ask that's... The fortune teller's box rocks on its foundations. Smoke spills out of its case in great clouds. Finally, it stops. Hey, ball of ham! How's it going? Welcome back to the Blue Rose Respite. Take a seat, enjoy yourself, and have a wonderful time with us. The most brilliant and incisive question I've ever heard. As a result for your bullshit pedantry, I will predict all four of your questions and answer them. Wow, Stephanie. You are such an asshole that you broke the fortune teller. Nice. Love you, Damien. You, Milo, says the fortune teller. You are going to ask the next major trend on social media will be. The answer is selling out. Finally, now I can stop pretending my relationship with Casper mattresses was anything to do with actual sleep quality. I don't even sleep. Oh, the salt of our Casper mattresses. <laughs> oh my god, RuPaul would be proud. <laughs> <sighs> Damien, you are going to ask me what your favorite color is. The answer, of course, is punching. Damn, you really can see the future. Calculester, you would have asked why we can't all just get along. The answer is Damien. Your prediction, unfortunately, seems quite plausible. Hell yeah, I win again. What about Stephanie? What was she going to ask? Beside the question about what she was going to ask. Stephanie is a simple monster with simple desires. She just wanted to know if she would succeed at this event. And the answer is... Yes! Right now, she will also gain plus two fun and plus one smarts. Okay, we managed to kind of save our bacon a little. Alright, hey Milo, how's it going? I was absolutely delighted today when I got home and found someone had stolen all my lamps. Oh, Did you like the little visit from Mothman? He's, he's just putting them to better use. It's okay. It's okay. He's just filling out our mansion for when we get married. It's fine. I may have poured too much vodka into my glass tonight, guys. Ooh, Shadow Tom, do I want to hear a joke about space? It's out of this world. Oh, Nice one. <laughs> oh, guys, are you dissing my belief in Mothman? Come on. Or do you just not believe in lamps? Like, I think lamps might actually be a construct of our own minds and, you know, we just... Accepting warmth from orbs of light that we strategically put around our room. Oh no, the belief in there's too much vodka in my glass. Okay, like, it w it's up to there, guys. Hang on, I need to tilt my glass a little. It's like, up it's like half full. So, it, it is on the rock, so it is like steadily getting diluted a little bit, but I'm going to try and savor it. Uh, is that a function when you, that you can activate which shows which person is at a certain location for most uh, monster prom and camp? I had to play guess where this person was when I tried to romance Vera. Um, I don't know, Shadow. Sorry. Uh, in the glow of the fire camp, uh, campfire. Fire camp. Brain not work right now. Hang on. In the glow of the campfire, you see Damien holding some kind of stick-like object near Milo's eyes. Clearly he's about to poke them out, so you rush over to stop the blinding. 
And that's how you achieve the perfect smoky eye. Powered by the smoke of an actual fire. Damien! Helping Milo with beauty? Tips? Proud of you. Oh, Daniel! I, I only just found out about the Italian chef. He passed away? Oh my god, I'm so sorry! <laughs> Nah, don't worry, Wolf Warrior. Like, that would just be awkward for everyone. Like, just be kind of aggressively moving towards my computer screen. Like, slowly moving towards my computer screen while you guys watch. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, what it is in, um, in Monster Camp. Like, the w monster that you want to romance is kind of picked at the start with the bus option. Which is always the ideal backdrop for a smoky eye. So if there's no fire readily available, feel free to start your own. Your makeup skills are impeccable, Damien. You don't need to soften, or rather, unsoften the blow of your talent by immediately going back to arson. But, but that's who I am. I'm Damien the arsonist, the badass, the criminal, the spicy red adult. <laughs> Damien, you're so spicy, I like you. I would hate to be known for my skill set I've honed secretly since childhood. Always dreaming about the day I could become a makeup artist and hairstylist. Universally adored for my talent. <sighs> Damien, you have such, like... You are such a soft boy at heart. I love it. I love it so much. Excuse me for just a moment, guys. Shall we continue? What? No. <laughs> if I was in a cage, I'd know and I'd destroy it. No cage can hold me. I just need people to fear and respect me. Fear and respect is different to buy and even more expensive to maintain. I can't let my people down like that. This is the problem of putting these labels on yourself, Damien. If you choose to define yourself as a bad boy, you take the trappings of toxic masculinity that come with it. You could keep to all your old ho uh, you could keep all your old hobbies like arson and crime while also celebrating new hobbies like floral, ar floral arrangements and figure skating. Let's start with a poem to reveal your artistic side. Yes, that'll be the perfect thing to accompany your beautiful, delicate makeup skills. A beautiful, delicate poem. Have you really seen my makeup as art? Then you wouldn't need to pressure me to write a poem to become an art to be an artist. Ooh, nice one, Damien. These two are clearly aren't going to see eye to smoky eye on this one. Time to do what you do best and pick a side. Why should Damien write a poem when crime's a poem to poetry already? What's that, Damien? Can't rise to Milo's challenge? I know you were scared of poems kicking your wheat prosaic, <laughs> prosaic ass off. Go, 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 go! <laughs> I think maybe, um... Damien definitely has a softer side to him that, you know, you kind of see, uh, you see a bit more through when you play his route, but it's, it's nice to see those little glimmers come out. Like, I imagine especially around Milo, who is so authentically themselves, um, maybe it helps Damien to feel a bit more like, like himself. Um, yep, yeah, first one's definitely Damien, second one is Milo. Kukukacha! Kukukacha! I could tell by your incredibly accurate impression that you were calling me a chicken, which I am absolutely not. The only time I've ever been a chicken was when I disguised myself as one to cockfight some cockfighters to teach a lesson about not cockfighting. Cock. <laughs> and since that's not happening right now, then I must not be a chicken. Damien, it's okay. Fault of being sensitive is admitting when you're afraid. I am not afraid! I'm gonna poem! I'm gonna poem right now! <laughs> God damn. I'm gonna poem so hard, it's gonna blow your fucking mind. That's a fucking rock. Oh. Uh, the trees. The trees. Yes, yes, the trees. What about them? The trees are... There. <laughs> They're gonna be there. They're gonna do it. The trees fucking... Fuck. Wait. Yeah, that's it. Tree orgy. That's my whole poem. No, wait. Tree orgy, free orgy. Shut up, I did my best. 
Why am I getting flashbacks to my poetry course at university? But tell me, Damien, what does the tree orgy symbolize in the modern context? I don't fucking know! Polonization! I, pollen, I don't know. Fuck it. And there's something beautiful about that when you think about it. Being willing to try something and fail that hard does take a certain amount of vulnerability. Ah, uh, yes. One feminine rhyme isn't going to erase years of toxic masculinity. But it's a start. Want to go write some poetry of our own, Stephanie? Possibly, Milo, darling. Just got a new notification for hugs and head pats ASMR. Oh, Shadow, I, I love me some good head, like gentle head pat ASMR as well. Just, mm, head pats and hair brushing. Just, ah, uh -huh, yes. Oh, that gives me all the happy tingles. <laughs> Another joke, what streets do ghosts haunt? Dead ends. <laughs> Hey, let's make it a theme that if you're going to uh, post a joke tonight, make it like a monster theme or something like that. Like a kind of monster pun. Or if you have just good monster puns in general, please drop them in the chat. I want to read them <laughs> as we keep going. You kind of hope writing poetry is a euphemism for making out. But it turns out it's a euphemism for writing poetry and posting it to Milo's Insta with pictures of sunsets and sad people in silhouette. <laughs> at, at times, he's such a wine mum. Like, like posting, like, uh, inspirational quotes on Facebook and stuff. Mm. Still, it's nice to spend time with them. And your ode to FOMO is beautiful when you're juxtaposed against an image of a galaxy. Bring out your flasks. Okay, I'm gonna try and use my skills this time. Get something good. The weekend is here. Kimikon! Oh my god! <laughs> Kimiko with 2,000 bits. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, dude. <laughs> and thank you so much for your support, for your generosity, for the bits. And I hope you have a wonderful time with us. <laughs> you haven't missed much or about uh, just through the first day of trying to seduce Milo in Monster Camp. So you're just in time for me to attempt to grab uh, some drinks. That'll hopefully give us a boost for the week ahead. Ah, welcome, welcome, Nyan Nyan. Ready to wrestle a bit to get a hold of the best drinks available? Don't get too confident. One push and you may end up drinking poison. Don't ask me why I serve poison. I'm a wizard in training. Anyway, get ready. Okay. Okay, that's not too bad. I was trying to get the one with all the, like, bubbles. Phobia shots. Oh, this is gonna go great. This is fine. Let's do some phobia shots, yeah. You know what they say, if you can't overcome your fears, drink them. Cheers to you. Doing that is surely bold. Now we're talking. Oh, hell yes. Nice. Still hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. Okay, I was worried that then maybe it would make us more paranoid or reduce our stats. But no, we got a fucking boost to our boldness. Um, but let's improve our charm a little bit. Today at Camp Dome. Okay, honestly, also the drink kind of fits uh, her personality and visuals as well. So kind of the perfect choice. Today at Camp Dome, the game is seven minutes in ex heaven extreme. You volunteer yourself as tribute for your camp. Of course we do. You put on some lip balm, ready for some hot kissing, but it seems you got the rules wrong. In seven minutes in heaven extreme, they straight up murder you and you need to stay in literal heaven for seven minutes. Thanks, bruh. <laughs> They stab you repeatedly. You're sure you're going to hell, but no, heaven is beautiful and it's all you've ever wanted. You want to stay, but they bring you back to life. You were cheered by your teammates, but you will never be the same after being taken from heaven. You do look more heavenly, though, and that translates into plus two charm. How many monsters are good at math? None. 
Unless you count Dracula. <laughs> that shouldn't make me laugh as much as it did. Oh my god, that one is so cheesy and so good. What do you get if you cross a sea monster with a duck? A quacken. <laughs> Very nice. Afterwards, you end up vibing with Milo, sharing a hammock, cuddled up all close to each other. Oh, are we now? And you're both checking your phones. Hell yeah, what could be emo more emotionally intimate than quietly scrolling right beside your number one summer crush? Suddenly, Milo's phone starts blowing up. Granted, Milo's phone is always blowing up, but right now it's worse than usual. No need to look so jealous, dear. Just a work text. I keep telling the head office not to contact me when I'm taking a staycation, but I suppose it's reading as urgent. La la la, another day, another death. Oh my god, um... It's a little awkward, isn't it? Well, not awkward for you, because you don't know yet. But, and I shouldn't tell you. I think we've done this one last time. So maybe this will give us a leg up. And I can't resist a little gossip. Listen, Stephanie. I don't usually disclose proprietary information. But I just got a gig for next week. To collect your soul. Huh? Milo's gonna reap your soul? That sounds super terrifying and also a little bit hot. You ask Milo if this means you're going to die next week. Hey, Steel Monkey 31 how's it going? Welcome back to the Blurrers Respite. Glad you could join us tonight. <laughs> oh, Hayden, I'm so glad you enjoyed Dracula. Like, honestly, I wasn't the biggest fan of, like, the twist at the end of the second episode, start of the third episode, no spoilers. Um, just because I was more engaged with the first half of it. But I still really liked how it ended. I thought it had a really, really good, uh, interesting way of ending. Short answer. Yep, you're totally going to die. Long answer. Life, death, and fate are weird and messy. And it's out to save 100% because of quantum nonsense. But if I'm getting the gig... Yeah, you're going to die. Congrats! Holy shit, this is the most awkward news you've ever received while lounging in a hammock. You start to freak out. No, Stephanie, don't freak out. I'm an expert, and I promise you, it's not as scary as it seems. Death reminds us of the profound, infinite beauty of life. And, uh, realistically, it's not like you're a mortal or anything. Sorry to burst your bubble, but death was always going to find you eventually, boo. To be quite honest... I'm actually doing you a huge favor by letting you know ahead of time. It's my gift to you. The opportunity to go out with a bang. Let's make this last week of your life the best week of your life. We'll spend every moment together and we'll end up with end it with a huge party. A celebration of Stephanie. A whole week with Milo. That sounds like heaven. And it's exciting enough to distract you from your own imminent death. You're in! Mmm, lovely. God, you're going to get so many posthumous followers. I'm almost jealous. Oh, and we should start considering the parting aesthetic right away. Mm. Oh yeah, I really liked uh, what they did with that as well, Hayden. <laughs> we need something big, memorable main event at the party. Something that will honor your true essence, Stephanie. And obvious should be Snapchat friendly. Any ideas? Your time to shine. Quick, what's the perfect way to one, entertain your party guests, two, commemorate your entire existence, and three, impress Milo? You'll narrate the epic tale of your life through the profound carnal medium of interpretive dance. You'll have your friends give toasts in your honor. It'll be emotionally moving, and everyone will get shit faced. Two birds, one stone. Okay. Um, our creativity is shit, our charm is okay, our fun and boldness though is really, really okay. It's- our boldness is great, our fun is okay. We messed up last time with picking the dance option, so let's try with the drinks one. Hey, Gundam Meister, how's it going? Welcome back. Take a seat, enjoy yourself, and make yourself at home here. <laughs> You'll have your friends get toasted in your honor, it'll be emotionally moving, and everyone will get shit face two birds on stone, please? Oh, that's perfect. It'd be like celebrating your life by intertwining it with the lives of the people you loved. I had no idea you were so profound, Stephanie. 
Thank you, my man. But if I know anything about drunken fatty toasts, we're going to need pre-approval on these speeches. We've got no choice but to conduct a rehearsal immediately. Spend the afternoon getting all your friends together and breaking the big news. You're dying next week! Shockingly, they all seem pretty okay with it. You humbly request that they all deliver a toast for you at the party. And just to be safe, you write the speeches yourself. Alright, lovely people. Come to welcome to the rehearsal for Stephanie's elegant end of life blowout bash. Let's proceed with the heartfelt eulogies. Uh, um, OMG, I can't believe that Stephanie is dying. I'm like totally sad about it. <laughs> but honestly, being dead totally isn't a, even a thing. Ghosts have more fun. Also, yes, fuck yes, Polly. I love her. And I love doing her voice. How would you describe a monster with amazingly good hearing? Eerie. <laughs> My favorite memory of Stephanie is when <clears throat> she saved a school bus of orphans from falling into a pit of lava using only her mega thick ass cheeks. <sighs> I'm sorry, I have to fucking drink to that because... I would literally cry if someone said that in my eulogy. We all know Albert Einstein was a genius, but his brother Bra Frank was a monster. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, twerk, twerk, twerk. Damn! Anyway, let's pour an out for Stephanie and pour another one out for Stephanie's butt. Those cheeks will be missed. <laughs> mm. I, I, I do love my butt. And Polly knows how to, how to honor my memory. This cannot be for real. Okay, am I the only person who is kind of weirded out that Stephanie's apparently dying next week? No? Just me? Cool. Anyway, Stephanie was apparently the most emotionally intelligent, thoughtful, and woke friend I've ever had. Here's to you. Nice try. Psst, Stephanie. You don't think people will actually fall for this, do you? It's the thing. <laughs> Gather one and all. I shall now read aloud a speech commemorating Stephanie. It is a speech that I definitely wrote myself. Besides me, Stephanie was the greatest warrior of all time. Her legacy shall be written in the stars, next to Hercules and or Orion. I drink in her honor. What incredible toasts, everyone. I think it's quite clear that Stephanie's touched so many lives, including mine. Here's one last rehearsal toast from yours truly. Stephanie is a silly goose, we're all aware of that. But we must remember that geese are some of the sweetest and cutest birds in the whole wide world. Oh! I'm sorry, like... Give me a minute. Stop falling in love with fictional characters. I thought I knew what it meant to really fall in love with life. But watching Stephanie's constant, elegant failures taught me that lesson all over again. Cheers, babe. That went shockingly well. You all spend the rest of your day getting totally drunk with your friends to practice for your party. All that tomfoolery earns you plus three creativity. Oh, fuck yeah! Here we go. I think we should up our charm again, just to be safe. Okay, awesomely, good to know. Um, if it's like a week has passed, then... Uh, and it hasn't arrived yet. Like, just keep an eye on my social media because I post about all the fan mail that I receive. But once it's arrived in the UK, feel free to send me a, a DM quickly and then I'll try to my best to keep an eye out for it just in case it's uh, delivered to my um, uh, PO box. Oh yeah, I still think I'm gonna die, but you know, if I'm gonna die, I want it to be in the arms of a gorgeous, loving reaper. So I'm, I'm okay with this. Okay, let's do our charm. Today you're playing the most dangerous Camp Dome game of all, Charm Wars. The rules are simple. You must gain charm by the end of the round or you'll die instantly. Stephanie, you better earn some charm quick. Like in the next 10 seconds or you're gonna fucking die. Holy shit, earn some charm already! 
Oh, okay, thank god, you just earned plus two charm. Phew, that was way too close. Since you're dying next week, Milo's been helping you live your last days to the fullest. Currently, the two of you are getting a super fancy pedicure, where little fish eat the dead skin off your feet. It feels amazing, and it's hella Instagram-worthy. Ah, oh, that really hits the spot. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. Fish give better pedicures than people. I've never actually had that treatment where it's, um, like, a, it's a nibble fish, and you put your feet in, like, the little, uh, in these little pools, and they nibble away at all the dead skin on your feet. Um, I've always wanted to do that, but I haven't had the chance to yet. I need to go to Bali sometime. And I needed some hour and, uh, this non-stop life celebrating with you has been all-consuming. But, honestly, I can't remember the last time I had so much fun. I agree, Hayden. Maybe that's the key to getting Milo. You need to die in his arms during the media shower. Like, that wouldn't surprise me, actually. <laughs> Ooh, Thailand is better? Good to know, good to know. Yeah. Milo looks at you with such bedroom eyes. Your heart starts to race. It's a tender moment. While we're enjoying this tender moment, I thought we could talk deets about your end of life bash. It's been really a I've been really immersing myself in the preparation, Stephanie. This might be some of the finest party planning work of my entire career. First off, the venue was insane. I got my boss to let me borrow her interdimensional penthouse. The ceiling is made of diamonds, and their bodyguards are literally four-dimensional. We're going to do this huge dramatic entrance for you, where you burst out of a coffin. Cute, right? And the coffin outfit is the perfect amount of slutty. Trust me. Oh, I do not... Like, I have perfect faith in your uh, taste in fashion, Milo. Just... Oh, and you're not going to believe the guest list. All the basics, sure. But we're going to have some huge guests on here. I did not realize you had this kind of pool, darling. Keep it on the down low. But I've got several prominent ghosts coming. Both Edison and Tesla. So things should get interesting. But still, I feel like something's missing. I think we need a big, mind-blowing VIP surprise guest. Someone who could show up halfway through the party. Uninvited and have a poetic final embrace with you. A real moment, you know? Does anyone come to mind? Maybe a long-lost twin, from whom you were separated at birth and have never actually met? Milo's right, you definitely need a kick-ass special guest for your party. You don't have any long-lost twins that you know of, but you do know the perfect VIP to invite. Okay, uh... The obstetrician who was there for your birth, he ushered you into this world so he'll usher you out. His party is all about you, so summon alternate versions of yourself from other timelines. It's poetic and awesome, like when Beyonce looks in a mirror. <laughs> oh god, I don't know which one to pick! Mm. Fuck. The thing is, I don't know which one of these two to pick, but I really don't want to mess up. I... <laughs> I'm thinking the lower one might be creative and then the upper one is more smart. Yeah, the top one sounds more like smart, so I'm tempted to go with the lower one, which could either be boldness, creativity, or charm. All of which are our strongest stats, so I think that's the one we've got the best bet in going with. I just don't want to disappoint Milo. Second one could also be boldness. Like, okay, let's go with the second one. Because, yeah, I love that meme of Beyonce looking in all the mirrors. I'm not sure whether it was an, uh, an ad she did or it was for one of her music videos, but... Please. That one was the smart one! Fuck! God damn it! Hmm. Multiverse selves are a little trite, don't you think? But I suppose if we don't have any better ideas... No, Milo! You and Milo finish your pedicures and then you go ask Joy to perform a summoning ritual of your alternative selves from other timelines. 
Joy says she can do the ritual, but it's super difficult, dangerous, and it'll cost her more than her life force. You and Milo are sure. This is a matter of life and death. F in chat for Stephanie's love life. <laughs> She's a competent ass witch, so she rips open a huge multiverse portal. It's purple pulsing and she yanks like eight different versions of yourself out of the thing. <laughs> you were worried that your multi multiverse selves might be a bunch of losers, but shockingly, these Stephanies are all wildly bangable. <laughs> well, I have been told many times to go fuck myself, so... <laughs> The prophecy is complete! There's an alternate Stephanie who's a part-time life-saving firefighter and a part-time stripper firefighter. Another Stephanie is a world-famous doctor that ca cured cancer and polio. She's also a world-renowned stripper. And then there's a version of you that's exactly the same in every way. But she has way better hair. No! Only Stephanie Prime has the best hair. Wow, this is a rainbow of Stephanie's. I never knew that you could be so, so seductive. Oh my, am I dreaming? Or is that an exact version of you that looks exactly like Alexander Skarsgård? <laughs> I kind of love Alexander Skarsgård, so yes. Yes, oh my god. Hey, Milo, says Alexander Skarsgård Stephanie. It's no accident that I ripped... <clears throat> it's no accident that I was ripped out of that portal. It was fate. Let's run away together. Same here, says better hair Stephanie. It was fate for me too. Ditch that loser version of me, and I'll take you on the most romantic motorcycle ride of your life. I'm getting cocked by myself! I hate this game! Motorcycles, fate, running away together. Oh, I can't resist. Oh no, all of your multiverse selves are also super into Milo. And it looks like Milo is losing interest in you fast. Milo pulls you aside. Listen, Stephanie, I know we were supposed to spend the rest of the week together, but something's come up. I need to cancel. You understand. But never fear. I'm going to pull a few strings upstairs and reschedule your death. You're down a few years, okay? Fuck, I fucked up this plot line! No. I'm sad now. <laughs> like, we weren't, like, anything set in stone. He's just cancelling our plans for, like, our, our makeout session on Friday. That's... They're, they're, they're just cancelling our plans and now I'm sad. I'm sorry I mis keep misgendering them. But never fear. I'm going to pull a few strings upstairs and reschedule your death. You'll die in a few years, I just have to fill out, like, one request form. Wait, Milo could reschedule your death this whole time? Why didn't they tell you that earlier? You had a good attitude about it, but it's not like you wanted to die. And done, your death is rescheduled, the bounty is cancelled, and I'm free to ditch you. Toodles, boo. Milo saunters away to go enjoy the obviously superior Stephanies that came through the multiverse portals. Your summer crush is totally over you, and the heartbreak makes you lose three fun. But hey, at least you're not dying next week. That's something. Yay! I might just walk into the lake with, with stones in my pockets, but that's fine. Oh. And Daniel, thank you, for the, ah, thank you for the hydrate check. I really need it right now. Milo, talk to me. Let's stir those You're intrigued by the sight of Milo forcing an unenthusiastic joy to try on a series of costumes and wigs. Luckily, she rips them all off before you sit down or else you, we'd have to actually show you art of that. Okay, fine. I see you're not interested in shallow fashionista joy, but I have a lot of other ideas for your new brand. What about hard-boiled private investigator joy? Or Manic Pixie Dream Girl Joy. Ugh. Or Sassy Divorcee Joy. Ooh, that last one just gave me chills. Not Those are all dumb. Also, in order to be a divorcee, shouldn't I have already been married? Hmm, good point. Your wedding could be the plot of episode one. This govern stuff writes itself. Milo, I already told you, I don't need a new brand. I don't even have a brand. 
The idea that my personality is merely a trademark is dehumanizing and reductive. Joy, you're taking this too personally. Of course, personalities are complex and beautiful, but everybody still needs their own brand. You more so than anybody. Every season of The Coven requires some fresh renewal or adaptation in order to keep audiences interested. Think of it as character growth. I'd rather think of it as pass. Come on, it already makes sense. Just look at all the different brands you've had in past seasons. Like what? Like insecure but brave Joy, who, uh, who fought to fill the shoes of previous coven leader Grace after her tragic death. Or grim interdimensional survivor Joy, who used the quantum compass to hop through dimensions after the herald of the longest night killed Hope. Oh, my personal favorite, stoic, heartbroken Joy, who was forced to move on after Liam disappeared in episode 9, until you two properly broke up on good terms. Oh, she used to date Liam. Interesting. Okay, that was not bad. Oh, wow, you're a pretty big Coven fan, aren't you? I dabble on some forums, which is why you should trust me with your next brand transformation. I know Joy Johnson Jujima better than you do. Actually, Milo knows Joy Johnson Jujima are only second best. At least that's what you're going to make them believe. What brand should Joy adopt for the next season? Relaxed and left alone by Milo Joy or exuberant salsa champion Joy? Oh, that's definitely much more up Milo's alley, so let's go with that one. That sounds fabulous. Oh, what? That makes no sense at all. I'm a force of light and good in the world. My brand doesn't include dancing. Which is what will make it so unexpected. Salsa so is such a spicy, vibrant variety of dance. It will be the perfect obstacle for the normally doom and gloom joy to overcome. Hey, just because I wear a lot of black and sing in a screamo band and constantly worry about the wor that the world is about to end does not mean I'm doom and gloom. Oh my goddess, maybe it does. We should get you a salsa costume right away. I'll get my edible arrangements guy to make you a fruit hat before you can say Arriba! This cannot be for real. No, Milo, I'm serious. I cannot and do not want to dance. Oh, psh. Don't be silly. You can dance. Remember what the esteemed Bob Ross always said. Talent is a pursued interest. Anything you can practice, you can do. I do understand we're on a tank crunch, so... How, uh, showbiz waits for no one. I'll sign us up for salsa classes immediately. Tell me, who sounds like a more competent teacher to you? Camilla Crazy Feet Fernandez or Loco Lorenzo the Saucy Siet? Bye. Goodbye. Hey, great idea, Joy. Divide and conquer. You go start practicing your steps and your twirls, and I'll make headway on the costume. You stay here and work with me, Stephanie. Since this was your brilliant idea. Tell me, do you envision Joy wearing a blood orange mini dress or a bearded bralette? Well, you could certainly envision one. In, uh, you can certainly envision one undead Hardy wearing those outfits, but it isn't Joy. It's giving you lots of ideas for a sexy Dia de los Muertos. We spend the evening helping Milo brainstorm and salsa Joy ideas. It's not going to go. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere, of course. But when has it ever been the point? Fuck it, I'll try and use my skills and see if I can salvage this. The weekend is here and you know what that means. Visiting good old Juan. Ah, welcome, welcome. Ready to wrestle a little bit to get a hold of the best drinks available now? Don't get too confident. One push and you may end up drinking poison. Don't ask me why I serve poison. I'm a wizard in training. Anyway, get ready. Okay, I can't see the one we like, but... Fuck! I got something, it's censored, I don't know what it is. But our romance with Milo's already fucked, so I don't care. <laughs> the redacted. The redacted has some weird powerful properties that stop anyone from being capable of actually using its real name. I think by drinking it, you've absorbed some of its properties. So I guess you're redacted from now. So mysterious. Okay, so Stephanie's not failing again. It's redacted. This is the part where I leave before you puke all over me. Ciao. 
So I'm not failing, Redacted's failing. I'm fine, I still have a shot with Milo. Woo! Alright. Uh, let's see if we can up our fun a little. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. She is so cute in that swimsuit. And she's so awkward at being in the water. Just, oh my god! Sorry, she's so cute with the, like, frilly bikini. Just... Oh, she's so awkward! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just gushing over her. Just a little bit of the gay panic is hitting me. <laughs> you want to go swimming, but it seems like the god of the lake is in a bit of a mood today. It demands an offering before you can even get in the water. The only thing you have to give is your favorite yo-yo, which you are playing with on, on the way here. God of the Lake accepts your humble gift, and it's actually kind of relieved you didn't leave something boring like a dead fish or the soul of a mortal. So in addition to gaining access to the lake, the god blesses you with plus two fun. Hey! You're chilling at the lake, literally, because lake water is cold. Luckily, it's still hot because the sun is shining and hot because Damien and Milo are here. Did you like those temperature-based puns? Probably not, but that's what you get for playing a comedy dating sim. I'm sorry, I haven't seen Damien in uh, the, his swimming trunks in a while, so I'm like... Um, I need a hyd- I need hydro checks, guys! fucking game. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys <laughs> for all the hydrate checks. <coughs> well, maybe that was a bit too much water. <laughs> but I'm just gonna say it. Both of them are fit as hell and yes. Just... Let us continue. Oh, there's flair in all of my selfies. And not the cool, on purpose filter kind. The actual accidental sun kind. It's like the sun doesn't even care about the crime. Ugh, the sun. Fucking hate the sun. Oh, well, it wasn't a huge deal to me. No, 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 it's a huge deal. The sun is huge and it sucks. I want to punch the sun in the face. The sun is a diabolic monstrosity intent on ruining our fun. Think it's ruining your pictures by accident? Uh, yes, yes I do. Do think that. Well, you're wrong, buddy. We need to show that that awful fuck brush of a gaseous ball of fire that we can enjoy the sun, the lake, without it. So, like, find some shade? Yes, exactly. Great plan. It would be nice to find some better lighting to highlight my amazing cheekbones without washing me out. And wash the sun right out of the sky by showing it who's boss. It's us. Us and our shade. Since I'm hot and bothered, how about another DT fortress day? What's line in French? I seem to have burst into flames. I hope that was to your satisfaction. <laughs> I've always been great at throwing shade. Time to take it to the next level, I guess. By punching the fucking sun. So, redacted. Any non psycho ideas? Call upon the Lord of Shadows because he probably has some shadows to spare. Or wear a really big hat. I mean, like, really big. Uh, that seems maybe more creativity. Our fun and our smarts suck, so... I think maybe Call Upon the Lord of Shadows. Because I think that maybe will be more boldness. Maybe? Punch the sun. I love Damien as well. Like, Milo is my babe, but... Damien could get it. Um, hmm. I think maybe that one's maybe more creativity. That one seems maybe more boldness. Like, our chances with Milo are already fucked, so I kind of want to just try with the Lord of Shadows. Yeah, it was boldness. Sounds great. If there's one thing I know outside branding, social media, and influencing, it's summoning powerful dark entities. 
Milo does their thing, and before long, a cloud of dark, swirling, shadowy smoke manifests before you, clearing uh, to reveal your new ally. The Lord of Shadows is a leggy, anthrop anthropomorphized, spiny insectivore with jet black spikes and red streaks. Wait. Oh my god! We have a. Guys, it's official! This is a Sonic crossover! We have Shadow the Hedgehog! Shadow the Hedgehog! Original character, do not steal himself in this fucking game. Oh my god, this this fucking game. Wait, Shadow the Hedgehog? Hang on, I gotta do the pose. I'm wearing black and red anyway, so it works. Suck fuckwads, says Shadow, taking a long drag on a cigarette and then swallowing it whole. Listen, we're trying to fight the sun. The sun? Ha! That bullshit is for punk-ass bitches and losers. Real punks fight Sonic the Hedgehog. Only spiky slow babies fight the sun. I'm not a spiky slow baby. I'm a spiky slow adult. You are such him. You are such a fucking himbo, Damien. I love you. <laughs> this fucking game. Sure you are. Shadow does this, a sick flip on his hoverboard, which explodes. <laughs> Next time I see Sonic, I'm going to rip off his spikes, dip them in hot sauce, and shove all of them up his butt. Come on, I invented doing that to people. Nice summoning, Milo. We're clearly gonna get a lot of help from this pointy edgelord in hover skates. Ugh, all I wanted was enough shade to take a good picture. Oh, you want shade? I just stole, stole a shit ton of umbrellas. I trade if anyone has explosives. I'm gonna birthday party later. In Florida. Oh, such edge! Such edge! I'm- Oh, I'm getting paper cuts from all this fucking edge! <laughs> This fucking game. What kind of nerd goes swimming without at least half a kilo of gunpowder somewhere on their person? Shadow forks over the umbrellas, Damien forks over the gunpowder, and the sun forks over some shade. All four of you have a great evening splashing in the shade of the lake and talking shit about the sun and Sonic. He gains you plus two fun and plus one smarts. Okay, that's it. Best game. Game of the year. Like, it... This fucking game, I love it so much. Where to go now? Uh, fuck, we can really do with anything, but what? We haven't done creativity yet, and I like seeing Milo in the scout uniform, so let's do that one. That day, the monster scouts hike around the camp, clearing up litter and respect nature and stuff. Nobody but Coach gives a damn about picking up trash, but it does quickly become a contest to find the coolest garbage. Some find used condoms, others find weirdly shaped fruit. You somehow find re find a Rembrandt. It's an original. Excuse me. The mystery of how the Rembrandt ended up here will go on to trigger the most epic adventure you will go on during the summer, but it won't happen on screen. But you still gain plus two creativity just by looking at it. So magnificent. That evening, Milo invited to the lake for a bit of night swimming. Good thing you packed your birthday suit! We might still have a chance, you guys! Ah, redacted. I'm so glad you're here. Our days here at camp have often, are often so chaotic and crowded. It's lovely to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you. Are you ready to go swimming? I must admit, darling, I've always wondered what you looked like while... Wet. Why are they looking at me like that? Proceed. <laughs> Haven't we all? You start taking off your shirt, ready to put the skin in skinny dipping. Oh, wait. You don't have a swimsuit of some kind? I don't want to get banned for nudity. What? Just give me a moment to prop my phone up on this rock and shout out to KatieCat99 for the follow. Welcome to our happy dating family. Oh, redacted. It seems today is Roxy Girl's birthday. 
Would you mind a quick shout out for me while I set up my tripod? He's fucking live streaming this shit! <laughs> I thank you for the stretch check, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh god, thank you, thank you. Ah. And thank you for the hydrate check, Major <laughs> Hayden. Thank you, thank you. What the hell is going on? Did Milo turn this date into an orgy without consulting you? I mean, not that you'd be mad, but a heads up is always nice. Huh? No, 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 no. I'm streaming our date. I hope you don't mind. I just love sharing things I like with my followers. And I really like you. I promise I won't let it become too distracting. We'll still have a wonderful time. Well, that's a bit annoying, but you really like Milo and you've never been against exhibitionism, so fuck it. Maybe this could be sexy. Excellent. Let's get the state started. After I tally the results of the poll I posted, what should Redacted and Milo do tonight? Hmm. It looks like most people voted for follow me back, please. Don't worry, Redacted. Responding to these 3,486 follow requests will only take a moment. Ah, oh, fuck that. Never trust the attention staff masses to do a monster fucker's job. Damn right! Damn fucking right! Leave it to the professionals! Like me. Mm. It's just a different way you can have a fun date while still improving Milo's stream. Turn dating Milo into a hot new internet challenge everyone wants to do and watch. Uh, three's not a crowd. Get a star guest to feature on your date. Okay, uh, hydro check for Zanschlu. Thank you. While we think about our answer. What do you guys think the right one to pick is? Like, because our boldness and creativity is really good. Honestly, all our stats are actually pretty good. Honestly, I think this could be either boldness or creativity. Like, both of these options. Maybe this one's more charm. I think the top one might be creativity. Oh yeah, Zanjalu, like this game makes me so dehydrated, it's not even funny. <laughs> oh god, it's turned dating Milo into a hot new internet tr a challenge everyone wants to do and watch. Or three, it's not a crowd, get a guest star to feature on your date. That one seems maybe more charm, so I'm less inclined to pick that one. And honestly, we've already kind of screwed up our chances a little bit, so let's take a gamble and do the top one. Yes! Oh, thank you, Redacted. That's a very flattering idea, but dating Milo was actually the internet's hottest challenge last year. Everyone wanted a piece of this. Oh, thank you for the hydrate check, Skorak. Much appreciated. It was pretty fun, but in the end it was sort of objectifying. It is so, so adorable that you're so internet adept. It's one of the things I like most about you. I do like the idea of creating a challenge, though. Maybe we could capitalize on a different internet trend. Perhaps the ice bucket challenge? Ah, no, it's a bit dated, and I don't want it to be cold. Or we could do the ass-eating challenge. It encapsulates two of Gen Z's favorite things. Food and thickness. My, my. It seems your boldness score is up quite a bit, my dear, dear Reaper. No, I've got it. Let's do the snuggling while watching a rom-com challenge. That's perfect for a date. It is so fun to stream. No, wait, go back to the ass-eating one. Go back to the ass-eating one. Oh, well, this is still fun anyway. You and Milo get cuddled up on the show and watch How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days Together while Milo's fans look on. In a poll, everyone votes that you share a bowl of popcorn and accidentally touch hands. And Roxy Girl suggests you feed each other a birthday cake in her honor. I now think I'm the one in need of a hydrate check. Oh god, you're not alone. <laughs> I might still have a chance, guys. You and Milo start a viral new trend. But for now, all you care about is how intimate the state is with 11... 
112,408 viewers feel. He gained plus two fun and plus one charm. Oh, and thank you for the stretch check, Wolf Warrior. Ah. Thank you, thank you. Oh, fuck it. I'm gonna still try and try to ask Milo to watch the stars with me. Because, um, we, we still ended on a positive note, even if we had a little bit of a hiccup along the way. So, Milo. Milo, do you wanna. Do you wanna go watch the media shower with me? You finally gather the courage to ask your beloved to watch the media shower with you? The two of us, the summer fling. What a cute idea you had there. You're so adorable. And so funny. What an adorable joke you just told. You and I dating. What is a hilarious little prank, you jokester. You got rejected by your summer crush. Your life is totally over. Ah. You spend the rest of your life trying to pass the law to abolish summer. This isn't funny, absurd, it is deeply disturbing. No one ever tries to get close to you. A grumpy, deranged old person who wants to ban a season. Get over it. It's fine. Like, I'll take what I can get from Milo. <laughs> I tried. Like, I need, I need a little gold... Like, there might be another idea for a cute emote. Is a little gold you tried star. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm actually gonna write that down because I like that idea. Conciliation Chinese. Thanks, guys. Like, I... Don't worry, guys. Like, I I know I definitely deserve to be treated better, but Milo is so pretty, and I love them so much. So... And exactly, it was Redacted who fucked up this time, not me. So I still have a chance. Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and felt like an entire lifetime. That night, as we saw summer coming to an end, we all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it. How those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies sung for centuries. Wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation will... Excuse me. Always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. Even today, I can still close my eyes and I'm there. On that last summer night. Feeling like I was just starting to live life. With all my friends around that campfire. So young and unafraid. And so ready to start. I tried. I tried. We got so close. I did my best, and I'm proud of that. But now I'm trying to think of like who we would want to romance next. Like Milo is a little on the narcissistic I, I say a little he they're a little narcissistic um but it's kind of like the territory that comes with being an influencer but i i adore them so much <laughs> and there's so many cuties in this fucking game i love it so much But I just love all of these characters so damn much. 
Redacted and an army of clones are the ones who lost their shot with Milo. It's fine. Maybe I need to have my plaid more on display and I'll have a better chance with them. I need to look more camp. I love this outro so much. These characters are great. I love these characters and this just this whole series just so much and I'm really excited to see what they come up with with the new DLCs and um, just what they have planned because I just love these characters. <laughs> I love them all so much. <laughs> ah, better luck next time, I suppose. Milo continues to be the beautiful, elegant white whale that continues to elude me. I love these nerds so much. Yes. Let's give it another try. Ooh, we just unlocked the community punch. Anything else? Okay, just that. Yes, let us give it another shot. And let's skip through that. Let's go with green this time. Brian, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, but I want you guys to have the think about who you would want to see us try and date next. So, we'll get to the Thanks list. So uh, lovely. Um, totally fine, ukulele. Yes. Magma trekking boots. Tardigrade plushie. Magic mushrooms guide. Multi tool. Wood carving machete. Sudoku Rubik's cube. Sketchbook. Coral comb, totally fine ukulele. Okay, uh, let's go with the totally fine ukulele. What does that do? That does creativity and boldness. Let's do one that's maybe, s I think sketchbook as well. Oh, that's straight up creativity. Um, Let's do something with smarts as well, so the magic shrooms guide is probably good. Okay, so guys are thinking uh, Joy. So far we've got three votes for Joy, one for uh, Aravi. So I'm thinking Joy might be the next one we try to romance. Okay, so Joy is our lover, beloved witch, uh, gorgeous witch girl. Aravi is our amazing, amazingly cool nerd, <laughs> demonically possessed teen. So, we've got a number of votes for Joy. I'm going to keep it open for just a few more seconds. So, if you want to try and romance a character that we haven't romanced yet, so you've got the choice of uh, Joy, Aravi, Calculester, and Calculester. Out of these three here, who would you want to see next? Okay, Joy, Ravi. We're playing as Brian because I haven't like seen Brian's uh, images for around camp yet. Calculester. 
Omega Syntax, how's it going? Welcome to the Blue Earth Respite. Glad you could join us. Take a seat. Enjoy your time here. Ooh. Well, we've had a number of votes for Joy, and I am curious to see what uh, her story is. So let's try and romance Joy. Or does Joy deserve, like, a big, hunky, undead zombie boyfriend? I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Okay, people are voting for Joy, so let's see if we can romance Joy this time around. Break the ice by doing something unexpected on the bus. Perform a magic trick. Ride the bus to victory. Zombies don't just want brains, they want heart too. Okay, that's really cute. Make sure the bus is happy. Press the skip button until this shit starts. Play dead. Start a fire. I'm, yeah, perform a magic trip is, uh, trick is definitely Joy, so let's give that a shot. Wish me luck, guys. Oh, are you doing a sleight of hand magic, Brian? Not bad. I've considered going into the entertainment route with my magic before if I ever retire from saving the world. Also, she's a badass who saves the world on multiple occasions. Like, hell yeah. It may never happen, but maybe you'd like to be my lovely assistant if it ever pans out. We can practice more magic together at camp and see if it's a good fit. We only have three weeks left to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Uh, okay, what do we need to work on? Uh, charm definitely first, and then boldness and fun. Okay, let's try and work on that charm. That day, a fun and zany scavenger hunt awaits you at the camp dome. Last night, the counselors stole your organs while you were asleep, and you have to solve the scavenger hunt clues to get them back. Is that fun? No? Too bad! You make the best of a situation by stealing your hotter friend's organs in place of urine. You gain plus 10 evil from Dimitri's liver. You also find a very strange gland, but against common sense, you shove it up your nose. It secretes plus two charm. Afterwards, you get drafted into a game of Mr. Freeze Tag, where everyone runs from one player to shoot you all with a freeze ray. You find a blessedly quiet, rusted out car chassis to hide in and settle in for the long haul. Hopefully, no one will blow up your spot. Hey, oh, hey, Brian. Hope you don't mind if we blow up your spot real quick. Good thing, Damien. We'll be safe here. Who said anything about being safe? I just wanted to see if there was any gasoline left in the tank so we could try to blow it up. Ugh, will you stop trying to find gasoline out here? We're in enough danger already. Well, I wouldn't need to keep looking for gasoline if you just teach me how to magically make fire with my hands. Oh, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Daniel. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and take care, okay? For the last time, I'm not teaching you how to make fire with your hands. Well, at least teach me how to shoot fire out of my mouth, then. Come on, I've been good. And hey, Baron Alistair, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome back to the Blue Rose Respite. Glad you could join us tonight. Take a seat and enjoy yourself. Good, you pushed three fairies in front of the freeze ray on the way here. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Oh, whatever. Just try to be quiet. If George the Sadistic Yeti hears us bickering in here, we're all getting frozen. Quiet. Got it. Going totally silent. Starting now. Go team. Two, four, six, eight. Quiet time is really great. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Ones, twos, fours, threes. Don't make noise or you, my friends. Scott, I mean, Scott, can you please... Stop loudly giving away our position to the guy with the freeze ray, please. I'm cheering. But I'm not loudly giving away our position to the guy with the freeze ray, silly. I'm cheering. Cheering straight up to Freeze Town, maybe. Yeah. Hey, it's not. that's not even close to how you pronounce victory. You need to cheer even more than I thought. Here we go. Three, six, nine, twelve. This is far from ideal. Maybe you can suggest another way for Scott to cheer. He'll stop radically endangering you and your friends. 
to tell Scott that his cheerleading isn't inspiring Joy and Damien because they're deaf. We need to be respectful and do sign language cheering. Instead of cheering, convince Scott to spit such super hot rap lyrics that you all become immune from freezing. Okay, lower one seems more creativity, top one seems more smart, maybe. And yeah, I, I love Scott. He's He looks like he gives great hugs as well. <laughs> So I think top one might be smarts, lower one would be creativity, so... I think, let's go with the lower one, because I think creativity is that one. Seriously? Yes! Psst. Are you sure this is the best way to get stopped from Scott to stop loudly cheering? Is to get him to start loudly rapping? <laughs> I like this plan. It's very similar to my original plan. Which was, set us all on fire so we can't be frozen. Oh. Suddenly, I like the rapping plan. Are you sure you can do this, Scott? Of course I am. I have a vague memory of doing a rap with Polly one time when we were back at Spooky High. That should be easy. Okay, here we go. Get ready. Scott Howe, Champion Spooky. Let's do this. Howe! Oh boy. Guys, do not ask me to rap. I can't rap for the life of me. It's gonna be like the widest fucking rap in the world and I profusely apologize in advance. Yo, I'm Scott Hall, and I'm here to tell you what you want to freeze my friends better freeze dudes nuts! You're out of my league and I don't mean maybe Try to step on me, you get ice ice baby! I've got a dick that's as strong as my sense of smell And you ain't got a snowflakes chance in hell I'ma wreck you till you feel like a part of you died Like an antique fridge with a child inside Yo! Okay, some of these li lyrics are fire <laughs> Holy shit, Scott, you rapped so hard. George the Sadistic Yeti caught fire and burnt to cinders. What? What, what happened? Sorry, I blacked out for a second. Like, when there's a full moon. That was magic. Okay, I can't spit fire as, like, as fast as amazingly talented rap singers can, but I, I, that wasn't half bad, I will admit. You, you did great, Scott. You did great. Hooray! Hooray! I love helping! You do too. You scribble down Scott's insane bars for the next time you need to set a yeti on fire and gain plus two creativity and plus one boldness in the process. Hell yeah. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. That was unexpected. I didn't know I could do that. I'm discovering all these hidden layers. Uh, okay, fun. Definitely we need to improve, so let's do that. Oh, <laughs> Brian. <coughs> Excuse me. The day you decide to take a swimming class in the lake, you learn all sorts of cool swimming techniques. The backstroke, the side stroke, the macarena stroke, the mime having a stroke. All those strokes sure are fun. They're perhaps a bit medically concerning. You gain plus two fun. Spend some time chilling at the lake with Joy. She's cast a waterproof spell on her book, Erotic Photography for Classy Witches, and you're trying to not drown. Okay. I'm just gonna say A plus swimsuit. I want that swimsuit. Yes. Joy, you look amazing. I love it. I need that swimsuit so badly. Hold up. Do you smell beef? It's not vegan friendly. And a faint whiff of fresh. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Guys, you better have those hydro, hydro checks on no way. Oh, goddess, no. Massive Minotaur Cannibal. Yeah! And Elegant Vampire Cannibal. zip -a -dee -doo -da. Fuck, it's Camp Rivals Camp, most notorious campers. Dimitri, the mysterious vampire, and Morty, the hypersexualized Minotaur. No, D Dimitri! How you doing, boo? I'm not drowning. I'm not drowning. My water bottle is getting very low, though. <laughs> and also, um, I'm just gonna say this is the first time we've seen them in this, um... 
disheveled state. So Oh, what are you two doing here? Can't you just let me read in peace for once? Although, I will admit with that wet and dripping with not super clean lake water is a good look for you two. Okay, he's wearing assless chaps. Like, yes. <laughs> like, he doesn't do anything for me personally, but I can appreciate art when I see it. Fuck yes. Listen here, witch. There's not enough lake in this lake for everyone. There's barely enough room in here for my bulging calf muscles. Indeed. So we're staging a takeover. In the name of the glorious camp arrival camp. Be gone, peasantry. Mm -hmm. I just leveled up my necromancy skill. And there are a ton of dead fish in this lake. You don't want to fuck with me, I assure you. Oh, I wish I could like get to her level. Like... Fuck yes, Joy. Your power is admirable and sexy. Is that so, Dimitri? Huh. I thought you might have tried to resist Deir's rival, but sadly for you, we have an irresistible, I mean, unbeatable technique. Now, Morty. <laughs> sexy man fusion technique activate. Ah. Uh, Magnificent. Dimitri grabs Morty's horns and awkwardly climbs onto his bulging CrossFit Instagram model shoulders. By order of camp rival camp's counselors, to ensure we're having the most summer fun possible, any fight in the lake must be a chicken fight. My goddess. goddess, I hate these constant shenanigans. Alright, Brian, you heard them. Let's get these idiots to go away and leave me, let me read in peace. I think it's like the uh, the game that that you play when you're in the pool or in the lake, where you have one person and then you have the other person on your shoulders, and you have to kind of like push the other person uh, over. So I think they're trying to do that. You're not about to pass up the opportunity to get between choice lines. <laughs> so you agree and hoist her up onto your shoulders. Defeat Morty and Dimitri. Save Joy's chill afternoon and have some fun while you're at it. Because hey, this is a video game and fun is the whole point. Jousting! Apparently that's what it's called. Like, I, I personally never played it when I was growing up, but I, I know that's kind of what it looks like. But it, is that the name for it? Jousting? That makes sense. Convince them that chicken fights are for kids. Real men only engage in intense chicken peace, uh, peace treaties. Or blow bubbles to make it look like Morty farted. Uh... I don't know, like, this one maybe is a smart one. And this could either be, like, maybe boldness. Convince them the chicken fights for kids. Real men only engage in intense chicken peace treaties. Yeah, the top one feels more like it's smart. But I'm like, the bottom one, it can either be boldness or fun. Honestly, all of our skills are kind of a bit mediocre, except for creativity. It could also be creative, maybe. Let's go with the lower one, and uh, just hope for the best. Oh, it was fun! Holy shit, that's an amazing idea. Juvenile, but amazing. Do it. You immediately dive underwater and began blowing bubbles near Morty's <laughs> juicy tushy. Hey, look everyone, Morty's farting. No, I didn't fart. Why is everyone laughing at me? I didn't fart, you guys. <laughs> Hang on, I can always do that. I'm not quite flexible enough, goddammit. No, I didn't fart. Why is everyone laughing at me? I didn't fart, you guys. Morty, please stop farting. I know you have a sensitive stomach, sensitive stomach, but it's super uncool. <laughs> Dimitri, I'm not farting. I swear on my great, great, great grand bull. You all know that I have a super strong, super strong butt muscles, so I can hold in my farts. I do it all the time. You blow bubbles even harder. Thank God you've been working on your lung capacity. 
You are farting. Look at those bubbles. Those are fart bubbles. Morty farts bubbles. No, stop it. I'm not farting. Come on, Morty. Let's get out of here. You're hurting our bad boy reputation more with every fart. You win this round. Fuck, you're right. We've got to get back to the camp, rival camp. I keep my emergency supply of Activa under our bunk bed. Nice touch. That was incredibly stupid and incredibly effective. Got any other stupid but effective moves, Brian? I would bet that you do. You enjoy get some quality alone time by the lake, during which you gain plus two charm and plus one smarts. Nice, nice, nice. Hey guys, how's it going? Milo and Joy are sitting close to a campfire. Joy is looking supremely annoyed when Milo shoves their phone in their face, in her face. This should be good. Oh, hello, Brian. I've just been showing Joy this delightful little quiz called "Which Government Member Are You?" Do you want to give it a try? Do not humor them, Brian. This quiz does no justice to the actual trials and tribulations my girls go through as Coven members. Oh, don't be so cranky. These questions are fun. Listen to this one. If you were a flavor of ice cream, which would you be? Answer choices are black licorice, birthday cake, tiramisu, and vanilla. Well, I'm definitely a black licorice. So dark and mysterious, but so sweet. Guys, I can't resist the, the pull of the Reaper booty. You know this. <laughs> the correct answer is only Neapolitan. Oh my god, I haven't had Neapolitan ice cream since I was a kid. We used to get it all the time in my family. I loved it so much. So when I, when I order my groceries next, I might buy some Neapolitan ice cream because then I, I can have like all the three flavors at once. But what does ice cream have to do with saving the world? This is all bullshit. Who knows? Maybe you could have a frozen dessert emergency. We all scream for ice cream. Okay, maybe I'll take a little bit of revenge on Milo, but, you know, I still feel guilty. <laughs> no, like, I haven't watched a lot of Ruby, so I wasn't familiar with the reference, but I was like, Neapolitan ice cream, fuck yes! <laughs> okay, last question. What's your idea of a perfect first date? I think I'll choose. A long romantic walk on the beach. It's a classic for a reason. The results are in. Are you ready? Ugh. I don't care. Ooh, I got Joy Johnson Jojima. Ah, oh, that makes so much sense. I am such a Joy. <laughs> what? No way. I'm Joy Johnson Jojima. There can only be one. The proof is in the pudding, darling. The pudding being mag magicquiz.com. Do you want to try it? You know what? Fine. I'll take your quiz to prove that it's dumb and predictable and... This be real. Wait, I got faith? Oh, gee, that makes so much sense. You are a total faith. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Baron! <laughs> Honestly, you guys are my Twitch chat and you guys are amazing, so that's what makes my Twitch chat amazing. So... <laughs> no, I'm not! I'm literally actually Joy! Well, maybe physically, but in your soul, you are a complete faith. You wear lots of black, you like animals and saving the world. It makes perfect sense. Just because Faith and I have some overlapping personality traits doesn't mean that we're the same. Yeah, she should probably step in and resolve this argument before Joy explodes everyone's eardrums. Is she Faith or not? Convince Milo this quiz is part of an evil plot to undermine the coven through identity crisis. Because of this, it's officially problematic. Or teach Joy the importance of self-acceptance and help her to embrace her inner faith. Uh, I think convince Milo this quiz is part of an evil plot is probably better. That seems much more... That seems much more in uh, Joy's favor. Okay, that was not bad. Oh, yes. Brian is totally right and definitely not full of shit for once. Uh, are you sure? A personality quiz seems like a far-fetched way to undermine the govern. No, it's not. In fact, I suspected it all along. I mean, I just listened to some just listen to some of these questions. Which coven member do you most identify with and also what is her biggest exploitable weakness? Huh. I thought that one was pretty lighthearted, but upon a second read. Yeah, duh. And this one. If you're a member of the coven, what would be the quickest way to defeat you? 
Gotta touch that ice cream. Gotta give that ice cream all the head pats. <laughs> I assume this is a Ruby reference. I'll leave it for you guys to enjoy. Answers are with an axe, with a poisonous smoothie, or with a pit full of witch eating piranhas. Wait, shouldn't any piranha eat a witch? Are their palates really that discerning? What a plot twist. Or the last option. With an ingenious, carefully crafted online quiz meant to sow seeds of doubt and unrest, causing a rift within the ang with the group of self. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Who made this quiz anyway? Joy, do you know anyone who goes by the alias Quizbert, destroyer of the worlds and friendships? Oh, jeez, this is Quizbert's doing? I thought we defeated that bastard in season two. Oh well, a hero's work is never done. Wow. I can't believe there's a bad guy whose special attack is making online quizzes. I didn't even know there was a market for that. Don't worry, Joy. As a fellow Joy, I'll do my part in bringing this evildoer down by putting him on blast all over my socials. He'll never quiz in this town again. Bye. Yeah, sure, you do that. You know what you're doing, don't you? Oh, thanks, Brian. You saw th through Quizbird's diabolical scheme and got Milo to leave me alone. You're good to have her around. Yeah, good for you. It's honestly... Excuse me. Pretty shocking that your BS statement held any weight, but you're glad you helped Joy. Maybe you're a Joy yourself. Bring out your flasks! Okay. My skills could use some improvement, I think. We can arrive, and so it's time to visit Juan, the small magical Latino cat. Look who's here! Really, I don't know who in their right mind would take such a cool risk to visit my bar. I guess you have more thirst than common sense. I don't know what you mean, Juan. I'm feeling called out by this. Anyway, get ready to party. Okay, that still looks kind of cool. Hopefully it'll be something cool. Casket wine. I'm curious what this is going to be. You can't just put a straw in a casket and call it casket wine. I was standing an inch of curse tied to that casket, and you just drank it. According to the experts, the curse lets you choose a stat and forces you to only gain and lose that stat for outcome effects. Good luck with that. I hope you learned not to put a store on everything and pretend it's a drink dummy. Okay, you can only gain or lose in that one particular stat. Our other skills aren't bad, but I think maybe our boldness, maybe? Because our creativity is good, I want to leave that as is. But as... Boldness is our weakest one. I think we have the less to lose. So yeah, let's do boldness. This is the part where I leave before you puke all over me. Ciao! Okay, boldness. Let's do that. While wandering the haunted manor, you're ambushed by a group of evil spirits. You put a good fight, but there's just too many of them, and they run away with your immortal soul. Luckily, you always knew this day would come, and you replaced your immortal soul with a beanie baby years ago. Good foresight on your part. You gain plus two boldness. You managed to find some downtime in the manor to spend with your three closest friends at camp. Calculester, Joy, and John Doe, the lovable deer-human hybrid who has been such an integral part of your high school adventures that I hardly need to tell you how important he is. The four of you has, have gathered in the haunted manor's kitchen to bake some chocolate chip cookies. It's normal and pretty nice. Must we bake these cookies in the haunted manor? It is dangerous here. And also the last batch of cookies we baked came alive and would not stop screaming as you ate them. 
I too was traumatized by eating those sentient cookies. But this is the only place in camp with an oven. And by the goddess, I'm going to do normal activity tonight if it kills me. Well, I hope it doesn't kill me, smiles John Doe, who you have known since childhood. I'd hate to get murdered before I could get back to my tent and French my girlfriend. I'm sorry, the moment, like they said, John Doe, uh, or John Deere, whatever his name is, but he was my childhood French, so I should remember. Or the instant they said their name, all I can think was Louis from Beastars. I'm sorry, in my mind, all I can think of is he looks like Louis from Beastars. I, I kind of love Louis from Beastars, even though he's a bit of a bastard at times. <laughs> Don't worry, Johnny. Nobody's getting killed tonight. Or my name isn't. Hold on. Oh, was that window open a second ago? Oh, was it re the return of the serial killer? I do not know, friend Joy. I was just taking a call from the creepy man who lives at the local gas station. He said to warn everyone never to go, never to go into the haunted manor. If you value your sinful lives. Uh-oh, says John Doe in that charming, world-weary way of his. Sounds like trouble. We'd better split up and investigate. <laughs> if anyone else had suggested it, I'd say that was a ridiculous and dangerous idea. But we've been through thick and thin together, John. I trust you with my life. If I had a life, friend John, I would also trust you with it. You have been a cherished part of my brief existence, and I cannot imagine what I would do without you. Three minutes later. I love her that he screams like R2-D2. <laughs> uh, steel monkey, no. <laughs> I see that joke coming. And the cookies saw that joke coming. A little more than they should have. But let's not, okay. <laughs> John, you have been stabbed. Please stop bleeding immediately. <laughs> He can't heal you, Calculester. All that bleeding made him dead. Looks like it's up to us to find the bastard who did it. No, Joy, that's not what Johnny would have wanted. He was always saying, if I ever get murdered, please call the police instead of trying to solve things yourself. That was sad. He did always say that. It's one of the things I liked best about him. Damn it, I guess we better call the cops. But people die if they are killed! <laughs> Wait, you murdered someone? But that's illegal! <laughs> well, three minutes later. I don't know, says one of the cops you called. Murder, it's a really incendiary, incendiary word. Are we sure this guy didn't just have a blood accident? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, if that's not the modern police system, like, are you sure this was murder? It looks more like a blood accident. Are you sure blood was having blood wasn't a pre-existing condition? Like, that's the most cop thing to ever cop. Like, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Has a knife in his body. Are you blind? Whoa, 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 says the other officer. Who's the cop here? You or us? Because if it's you, I'm going to be really confused about why you called us. Oh man, you heard that all cops were bastards, but these guys are too dumb to even suck. This game said A cab, and yes. <laughs> oh my god. How can you show them conclusively that a murder happened here? Point to the message John wrote in his own blood before dying. I was definitely murdered by that dude right behind you. Or purchase John's autobiography published five minutes ago and check the final chapter. Oh my god, just this fucking game. I always remember a case from about a decade ago of a man found with his head. The news reported the police were treating it as suspicious. 
Oh my god, Aiden! Oh my god, yes. Point to the message John wrote in his own blood before dying. I was definitely murdered by that dude right behind you. That definitely seems more like smart. Uh, purchase John's autobiography published five minutes ago and check the final chapter. That hints maybe more at creativity. I kind of want to go with the second one. But the top one could also be creativity because it's like a physical thing as well. Okay, while this game pokes fun at some political stuff, let's ease off of the political stuff in the chat, okay guys? Like, I imagine once we leave the haunted house, this topic of conversation will quietly disappear. But, just a heads up, let's not try and get too heated in the chat. So, top one, uh, it could be creativity or smarts. Lower one, published five minutes ago, check the final chapter. Could Honestly, it could be either one. Like, I'm a massive fan of my favorite murder, so I, I know about some weird true crime shit, but let's... Just because it can get it as a delicate topic of conversation, and we're not going to have any drama in the chat tonight, given the state of the world at the moment, so... Let's just focus on, was... Was it murder, or was blood a pre-existing condition? <laughs> Uh, honestly, it could be either one of these. Um, I'm just trying to think which would make more sense for creativity. Purchase John's autobiography, published. That one's maybe in meaning more smarts. Maybe that one's more creativity. Okay, I'm sorry, I just had the passing thought, like, okay, because you know how uh, with vampires, like, the way it typically works is that they bite the flesh, and then they suck the blood out, and they gulp it down like they're drinking something. What, because then there's also sometime in artistic depictions where the fangs themselves are what actually drains the blood up into their system. All I can think of is that dumb trick where you have, like, straws stuck in your gums, and you pretend you're a walrus. Um, all I can think of is a vampire with straws stuck over their fangs and they just jam the straws into someone's neck and they sl slurp it out that way because they don't like getting messy. <laughs> oh god. But I can't decide on which, op which option to go so I'll leave it up to you guys. Option A or option B. Option A, point to the message John wrote in his own blood before dying. I was definitely murdered by that dude right behind you. Or option two, purchase John's autobiography published five minutes ago and check the final chapter. And while I do a stretch check from Hayden. Thank you, thank you. Oh, oh my shoulders are so stiff. Fuck. Sleepy. Unfortunately, there's not an option three, Baron. <laughs> okay, so we've got one for one, one for two, and one for three. <gasps> Baron! <laughs> oh my god, Baron. Unfortunately, four isn't an option either. Maybe option five, though, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh god damn it. Okay, we've got two votes for option two. Let's do that one. Oh, that was the smart one. Damn it. Ryan is right. The autobiography of our beloved John Doe is just published on Amazon. I shall download the ebook immediately. Calculus to downloads Johnny's autobiography and prints the book out of his ass so you can all read together. The book begins like any autobiography with, John with Johnny's childhood. The half-held account of how the two of you met during a high-stakes dodgeball game brings a tear to your eye. Soon, however, the story begins to take an unexpected turn. 
extraordinary. I was very close with friend John, but even I do not know he was friends with One Direction and the Thundercats. He wasn't. Cal, this isn't a real autobiography. This is a horny AOE3, AO3 fanfic about your dead friend, about her dead friend. Ah, that explains why the author is Zoe. Oh my god, Zoe! If you guys watch me play Monster From, Zoe is the Cthulhu, like, tentacle girl who we ended up joining her cult and worshipping her like the goddess she is. She wrote fan fiction about our- she wrote horny fan fiction about our dead friend. Oh my god, yes! This fucking game. Yes! Yes, Zoe! Ah, uh, that explains why its author is Zoe. I thought it was just a new form, a brand new form of autobiography, not written by the subject. Ugh. Oh, Baron, you're missing out if you haven't been on AO3 or, for a while. I have a very, very private book series of bookmarks on AO3. <laughs> it's so good. Okay, uh, for clarification, for those of you who don't know, AO3 is a fanfiction website um, where you can write and submit your own fanfiction, either as like uh, as like individual chapters or like bigger pieces of an ongoing series. It's essentially a fanfiction hosting website for multiple fandoms. So yes, it's called Archive of Our Own. It's shortened to AO3. So I would highly recommend checking it out if you are in need of some good fanfiction. And yes, absolutely, Baronessa. Very LGBTQIA+. Very, very much. You can write and post almost anything you want on there. Oh, Wattpad. Oh, I remember those ancient days of Wattpad as well. <laughs> That's called a biography. Even, even that has to be true. This is just a porny piece of evidence, cries the taller of the two cops. I'm confiscating this important document for crime reasons. This is huge, says the shorter cop, standing on tiptoes to read over his partner's shoulder. It says here John Doe flew to space with Harry Styles to fight the space Nazis. After an epic battle with Andros from Star Fox 64 and the one giant boob, our hero John Doe was tragically killed. Or was he? You know what that means, says the other cop. You are so weird. That this is bullshit and you're bad cops. That John couldn't have been murdered. He has an alibi. Uh, but he's here, dead, with a knife in his back. Do we have an alibi? Oh, hey, that's mine. Gonna just grab that real quick. See, says the short cop. Now we don't even have a murder weapon. You kids should know better than to waste the time of the police. But crimes have been committed. That man is a criminal. The only crime here, says the tall cop, is that we're going to have to wait God knows how long for the sequel to this autobiography. I felt so bad because I used to write fanfiction back in the day. I left so many series hanging and it's, it's the only thing that haunts me to this day. He came back for Stabatha, his favorite knife. <laughs> Baron. That is god tier levels of naming your weapon. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know where I, I need to put this down. I just need to write this down somewhere. Stabatha, fuck yes. I'm just trying to find an appropriate notepad to put this in. Just perfect. Stab those going my list of names to give magic items to give my D and D players. Honestly, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> the cops head out to join a book club devoted to this horny parody of a dead friend's life. While the knife maniac predictably stabs you a lot, you lose two boldness and one boldness. So our boldness is shit, but it's the only thing we can lose, so it's not too bad. Alright, 
So honestly, anything we pick, it's always going to be boldness. So let's do creativity because I kind of want to see what the scout outfit looks on her. That day in Monster Scouts, you make each other friendship bracelets. Except the Monster Scout leader pairs you randomly with your friendship bracelet recipients. So I guess Larry the Lich doesn't feel left out having no friends. You get paired with Larry. Surprisingly though, he's a great conversationalist and he makes you super heartfelt bracelet that imbues you with plus two creativity when you wear it. Oh, so we only lose from or gain boldness when we succeed or fail in that? Okay, so that's good to know. We can still gain it or lose it in other departments too. Larry sure is nice. Maybe it will come a day when he's cool enough to be your friend or at least a romance... Ran Romanceable summer fling option, but today is not that day. Oh, I like that. I love her outfit. Just a little bit of corporate, but the palette, the coordination is just perfect, darling. Afterwards, you're hanging out with your number one summer crush, Joy. It's national, fondly reminisce upon the past day, so she's flipping through the pics of her phone with you. Ooh, this is back from season three, right after we beat that mutant spider. Faith looks so cute in this one. And look at that awesome Fleetwood Mac t-shirt I'm wearing. That t-shirt was so cool. It was vintage from the 78 tour. Stevie Nicks blessed it herself. Whatever happened to that shirt? Did I sacrifice it to the goddess or something? Hmm. Oh wait, I remember exactly where I left it. Fuck! Joy makes a mysterious phone call. She starts asking about the Fleetwood Mac t-shirt. But the person on the other end of the line is obviously not being chill about it. Listen, Akrax, I know things ended badly between us, but can you please just give me back my Fleetwood Mac t-shirt? I specifically remember leaving it in your evil lair. I know you know which t-shirt I'm talking about. I didn't leave multiple t-shirts in your lair. No, there is definitely no need to discuss it in person. Do not portal here. Suddenly, a magical portal opens. An objectively sexy centipede person emerges and they're giving off palpably villainous vibes. Give me a second. <sighs> She's cute, cute monster girls just... So many hands! So many hands! <laughs> I'm getting some Mantis vibes off of her, and yes. <coughs> Thank you for the hydrate check, Aiden! Much appreciated! And she's a centipede, not a Mantis, so it should be fine. Joy, baby. I've come to speak with you in person, just like you wanted me to. You look as lovely as the day I wrapped you in my bug silk. No, Akarax, I specifically said that I did not want to talk with you to you in person. You're going you're doing that thing again where you gaslight me into spending time with you, which is bullshit. Okay, fuck it. If she's gaslighting Joy, then fuck that. We have no patience for gaslighting. Mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. Pretty, she, she's still cute though. Ah, oh, Brian, meet my ex, Akarax. They're a magical evil centipede person I defeated back in season three. I know they look hot, but don't let your guard down. They mind controlled everyone in Philadelphia and tried to make all the citizens jump, to, jump into a pit of centipede venom. Oh, you make me sound so evil, Joy. But that's all in the past now, gorgeous. We should just focus on the present. And this very important t-shirt debacle. Why don't we ditch this third wheel? You and I can go for a coffee and talk it over. Or perhaps we can enjoy a romantic dinner. Do any restaurants around here serve pre-chewed aphids? Ugh. Oh, Baronessa. By the way, Stephanie, I need to sue you for giving me a thing for Dryders and Turakai. Um... I will accept that heartfelt thank you, and I will gently say, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, Baroness, I'm really glad you enjoyed those videos I made. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, Akarax, if I did get one coffee with you, do you promise to immediately hand over the shirt? Show me the shirt right now before I waste my time. Oh yes, let me check inside of my carapace. Oops, silly me. Looks like I forgot to bring a shirt. Guess I'll just have to keep hanging out until my portal spell recharges. I've told you so many times that I'm not okay with us hanging out, because we always end up getting back together. It's a toxic cycle, but fuck it, I really want that t-shirt. Oh, thank you so much, Shadow Tom. I'm really glad you enjoyed them. Akrax is stressing you out with a potential, uh, stressing out your potential thick goth, girl goth girlfriend. Unacceptable. Get that Fleetwood Mac t-shirt for joy by any means necessary. Oh, you're most welcome, Shadow Tom. I had a lot of fun riding them. Set up a black market exclusively, exclusively for buying and selling Joy's belongings. You'll trade for the t-shirt. Call the police and send out an amber alert for the t-shirt. Akrax can't hide from the power of vigilant of a vigilant community. Tops is sounding more like smarts. Bottom one, I'm not quite sure if that's boldness or creativity. Either which, it's a big, bit of a gamble. Yeah, top one sounds more like smarts. I'm not sure what the lower one might be classified as. I'm trying to think. What do you guys think? Bottom one could be creativity, but maybe that would actually be more smarts. It could also be charm as well. Okay, we've got a couple of picks for option two. So I kind of want to go for option two because option one could go real bad. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry, excuse me. I'm a little bit sleepy. Hmm. Let's do the lower one. Fingers crossed. Ooh, that was a smart one. An Amber Alert. Seems like it might be a waste of public emergency services, but it's better than watching Axorax uh, drink coffee through her proboscis. Let's go. You and Joy go to the police station and file a missing t-shirt report. You describe the t-shirt, beloved vintage, smells like heavy metal concerts and burning sage. The police officers are super concerned. Did you say this was a Fleetwood Mac t-shirt? And it was vintage? This is serious! We're assigning our best detective on the case. Yes, yes, it's me, Detective McBooty. We're going to find that missing shirt, officers. Remember, the first 24 hours are the most crucial to keep this case from going cold. I've sent out alerts to all the local cell phones. We'll be conducting interviews with t-shirt lovers in the area, and community search parties will begin immediately. <laughs> Wait, I appreciate the help, but you're misunderstanding. We already know who has the Fleetwood Mac t-shirt. It's with my ex, Akarax. A true detective never works off of assumptions. We will get your t-shirt back. Through the power of deduction and evidence, my dear Joy. Six hours later, Detective McBooty concludes that, yeah, Axorax definitely has the t-shirt. Duh. You there, bug person. Detective McBooty, FBI. Stop right there, hand over the Fleetwood Mac t-shirt and we'll escort you to prison. Wait, are you implying that I'll be taken to prison for stealing a single t-shirt? My god, criminal justice system is even worse than everyone says it is. Oh, well, you're going to prison because you're mind-controlled Philadelphia, and you keep dissolving humans in your bug venom. But shirt stealing is also a serious crime. Okay, I will say, let's not get into that topic for conversation. It's a long and difficult conversation, and we're trying to have this little oasis from the rest of the world outside, so. And some of my good friends are in the police force, but I'm not going to lie that it is a heavily prejudiced system that has got a long and complicated and ugly history of covering up crimes and taking bribes, so. Let's not go into there. And let's move on. Move on! Uh, I know I can open magical portals, yes? Your human jail will not hold me, McBooty. Tell her to the judge, Buggy. This has been joyful. Huh. 
I got my shirt back and I also got to see my ex led away in handcuffs. This is officially a great day, and it's thanks to you, Brian. God, Joy is so fucking cute. She wears the t-shirt for the rest of the day. Turns out it really is blessed by Stevie Dicks. Stevie's blessing gets you plus three boldness. Yes, okay. Wearing just a t-shirt around, just, oh my god. Joy is such a cutie. <laughs> All right. Hey. And she's back with Milo. Maybe we can add a little bit more salt in that wound. <laughs> you happen upon Joy groveling in front of Milo? You're pretty sure you've never seen Joy grovel before. It's kind of unsettling. Um, no, I'm not groveling. I'm posing a dignified query to Milo that just so happens to be performed on my hands and knees. Anyway, Milo, please help me out here. I'm in the middle of a quick summer adventure that is just important enough to justify a full episode arc. I really need to consult my dead ally, ally uh, Rabaru. She's the only one who knows how to solve Un uh, Univertica's eighth eye puzzle. Can you just raise her spirit and... I'm sorry, Joy. I would really love to help with whatever you just said, but I'm terribly busy right now with important Reaper business. Really? Because it looks to me like you're browsing Etsy for a new cloak. Which is important business. My uniform must be somber, yet trendy. I can't afford to go out of fashion. I'd use lose all my credibility. Let's save the world. But the fate of Monster Kind depends on taking down Univertica. I really need your help, Milo. Don't you want to save the world? Is taking down this Univertica really equivalent to saving the world, though? I mean, everyone can make a difference no matter how small their actions but just look at everything univertica has already destroyed at least two urban outfitters have already been demolished by her nefarious plans and she has a sight set on flattening the smoothie king on third street hmm well i've always been more of a jumbo juice person myself so i think i'll pass damn joy's fighting univertica again this season of the coven must be slow clearly one of your friends is in the right here and it just so happens to be the one you're s trying to bone. You settled the disagreement. Milo, you could turn this into a whole thing. Raise Rabaru's spirit and do a live Q&A. Or Joy. Milo can consult the dead for you if you support them on Patreon. Friendship is never an excuse to work for free. Okay, lower one seems to be more helping Milo, which I'm always up to help Milo. But Milo, you could turn this into a whole thing. Raise uh, Rabaru's spirit and do a live Q&A. That seems much more in Joy's favor, so let's go with that one. Hey, that's actually a great idea. Honestly? It is? I mean, of course it is. Yes, why didn't I think of it sooner? My followers would love to speak to a minor celebrity from beyond the grave. Joy, you've got yourself a deal. Milo does some sort of complex reaper thing that for NDA purposes I can't get into the specifics of, and suddenly out pops the spirit of Rabaru. Hello Instagram and welcome to Milo's first dirt celeb live Q&A. Tonight, today I'm honored by Miss Rabaru. Okay, to be fair, Milo comes across more as a switch, to be honest. Like, I think Joy is definitely a top. Milo is a switch, though. Hey, it's all good, Steel Monkeys. So long as you just didn't take it too far or too extreme, it's all good. It's whenever you're second guessing telling a joke, it's probably a good indicator that you shouldn't tell that joke. So it's okay. It's all good. Tell me, Rabaru darling, how are you feeling today? I feel like I was just ripped from the comfort of the netherworld and thrown back into the cold, unforgiving hell that is the mortal plane. Rabaru rasps. Oof, big mood girl. Alright, you lovely, my lovely followers. What sorts of questions do you have for our esteemed translucent guest? Milo Madness96 asks, When you return to the netherworld after a long day of being a ghost, what's your favorite afterlife snack? The souls of the innocent, Rabaru replies. Also pistachios. Delicious. Girl that's go boo bay asks, Hey sexy, name ASL. Followed by a few tongue emojis. Oh, 
I'm Rubberu, ages 607, Sextus Spectre. The location of my body is in the black tar pits of the mindless dimension. Harry Potter is dead, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to do the best Voldemort impression I can. <laughs> wow, the mindless dimension, so exotic. I have a timeshare there. Now, Milofied XO wants to know, if we only have the netherworld to look forward to when we die, is there any point to achievement or seeking meaning in our lives at Earth, on Earth at all? No. Great. Our next question comes Joy from... Johnson, Jojima. Joy Johnson, Jojima. Rabu, sweetie, can you remind me how to solve the eighth eye, sir, eighth eye puzzle again? Huh? Oh, that's easy. The passcode is my birthday. Oh, wait. One, two, fourteen, thirteen. <laughs> right, duh, okay. Thanks for being here, girl. Rest easy. My birthday is coming up, you know. Are you coming to my potluck? You promised you'd actually start hanging out with me instead of just calling me when a puzzle needs solving. I'm needed somewhere else. Oh, right. I gotta go solve this Univertica thing, like, urgently. See you later. Oh, and Brian, why don't you come with me? You seem like a confident teammate, and I don't need to work alone. Hell yeah, you prefer to work with others too. First deck to a workplace romance is to have co-workers after all. Wink! Bring out your flasks! Oh, fuck it, we'll try and use our skills again. Get something good. The weekend is here, and you know that what that means. Visiting good old Juan. Ah, welcome, welcome. Ready to wrestle a bit to get a hold of the best drinks available? Don't get too confident. One push and you may end up drinking poison. Don't ask me why I serve poison. I'm a wizard in training. Anyway, get ready. Meow. Okay, please boost my stats. Please boost my stats. Stat smoothie. I managed to just steal the stats and make us who we are. The result is a, the result is a stat smoothie. It's a huge, delicious boost. Oh, fuck yes. I chugged that shit like a champ. Thank you, Wolf Warrior. Much appreciated for the heads up. Hope you can stomach that. Have you trails? Let's go take a nap. God, those stats are broken as shit, and I love it. Um, let's go to the woods. We haven't been to the woods yet. I think. Oh, he's made squirrel friends. That day, while you're hiking through the woods, an angry gnome steps on your path. Halt, giant beast, he cries. If it is passage you seek, you must first answer my riddles three. Riddle number one. How is a raven like a writing desk? Uh, well, they both make notes, though they are very flat. And... Both of them have quills. I actually know the answer to that riddle. Hmm. That's a tough call, but you give your answer. You punt the gnome in the sky and continue on your merry way. Apparently, that was the correct response because nobody else tries to fuck with you. You gain plus two smarts. You're enjoying a romantic afternoon picnic with joy. You made sure that everything here was vegan, including the picnic basket and the blanket. Impressive. What's the velocity of an unladen swallow? Uh, depends. Is it an African or a European swallow? <laughs> Gotta say, Brian, this is pretty impressive. I didn't know you could weave a blanket out of tofu fibers, but... Wait, fuck, did it just start raining? Suddenly, inexplicable rain. Impossible! Al Roker promised it would be sunny today, but despite Al's prediction, a menacing storm rolls in. <laughs> I'm sorry, this... I can't get over these characters' designs, they're all so gorgeous! Like,
like, this is perfect time for, like, a girlfriend jacket moment of, like, protecting Joy from the rain, but... Ha! Huh? <clears throat> She's dressed like a fucking supervillain, and I'm living for this. And a bolt of, of lightning strikes two feet in front of you. It's pretty scary, but the sexy, villainous, magical warlock list that steps at the lightning is even scarier. Oh my god, she's a warlock. Joy, my old flame. My most powerful nemesis. Just seeing you fills me with lust and with blinding rage. My goddess. My goddess, Brian, this is Salom, my ex-girlfriend. Salom, what are you doing here? We broke up ages ago, and I already defeated you in the season 5 finale. Huh. <sighs> That's all lube under the bridge. I was stalking your bikini pics on Insta yesterday, and I saw a post on Axorax's feed. You were hanging out with that bug-faced buffoon. I'm filled with horny jealousy. Joy, if you wanted to have crazy hot lubed up rebound sex with an ex-lover, why didn't you call me? We were electric together, honey. Oh, I am sorry she is so horny on main and I'm living for this. Ah. Holy shit, it's none of your business. But I was not having rebound sex with Akarax. As usual, you're completely blinded by your own thirstiness. Oh my god, Talon, now's when you show up. <laughs> Talon, just in fucking time. I hope your daughter's not watching because, um... Things are ridiculously horny on main, and it might get awkward, so just give you a heads up. Just giving you a heads up before we continue with this scenario, but glad you could join us tonight. <laughs> okay, good. I just wanted to check before we continued. <laughs> As usual, you were completely blinded by your own thirstiness, and I think she's calling us out, guys. Oh, well, if you're not in the mood for rebound sex, we can have any kind of sex you want. Makeup sex, hate sex, break from doing your taxes sex, the best kind. Anything you want, as long as it's sex. Listen, Salam, I'll admit we had some had pretty insane sexual chemistry, but I called it off for a reason. It always gets way too messy, too fast, and also, you're evil. Thank you for the stretch check and the hydrate check, Deadpool. Thank you, Baroness and Deadpool. <laughs> Slanesh has entered the chat. Gods, you're not wrong. I imagine break from doing your taxes sex is usually incorporated with a dramatic, like, wiping off of the desk of all the paperwork. In dramatic fashion, and it's like just sex on the desk where you're supposed to be doing your taxes. But like the putting off of your um, I, I was gonna say um, your procrastination. Like I w I couldn't think of the word procrastination. Like the word that came to me was prestidigitation, which of course, as a D and D nerd. That, t like, enters your brain first before procrastination does. <sighs> Remember when you dressed up in that leather harness to distract me and your poisonous misspell killed, like, 180 people? Yeah, I got a pass on this. Um, guys, do not imagine Salom wearing a leather harness. Like, or, like, just do it. I'm not the boss of you. <laughs> I'm the boss of this chat and the stream, but this is the game putting the ideas in your head, not me. I roll to seduce the dragon. Yes. Yes. What is this appointment? I didn't want to do this, but I have no choice. I'm forced to use my secret weapon of seduction. Prepare yourself for this foot massage coupon. You gave me some romantic coupons on our anniversary. Anniversary and I've saved them all this time. Now I'm redeeming this coupon to completion. I cannot believe that I have to explain this to you. But romantic coupons are not legally valid, especially after a breakup. Duh. Super duper duh. Ridiculous. There's no expiration date on this coupon. But I suppose I can be reasonable. I have a whole collection of coupons here. 
How about a trade-in? We could redeem this gastric cleaning coupon from my doctor, or this Groupon for a free Brazilian wax, or this coupon for one free sexual yogurt experience from Yogurtland. Oh, these coupons are definitely bullshit. Picking one is probably the fastest way to get Salom to leave us alone. Brian, which coupon should I pick? Help Joy vanquish her evil ex-girlfriend by choosing the least horny coupon? Fortune favors the bold. Choose the ask me any question and I'll answer truthfully coupon. Or pick the right leg coupon. It's the last coupon we need to form the legendary Exodia coupon. <laughs> For the sheer power of Exodia, I want to pick that one. Like, the first one might be playing with fire a little bit, but... I want to pick the sheer power of Exodia. Yes. Pick the right leg, coupon. I play my god. <laughs> it's the last coupon we need to form the legendary Exodia! Huh. The right leg coupon. Pathetic, you fool. That coupon is the most useless one in my whole collection. We need to destroy her blue eyes white dragon. It's completely worthless. Unless, of course, you happen to have the other four Exodia coupons. But that's impossible. Victory will be mine. Brian, what are you doing? We have to pick a coupon that'll somehow defeat Salom's horniness. Or I might lose myself to her raw sexual charisma. You've been waiting for this moment your whole life. And you won't back down now. You grab the right leg coupon from Salom and pull out the coupons your grandpa left you. You channel the heart of the cards and draw four, the fourth, the four, ex legendary Exodia coupons. You finally have them. All five pieces of Exodia. Wait, no. Brian, it's too dangerous. You have no idea what you're doing. I, I can't believe it, Brian. It's the ultimate coupon strategy. Only the one true chosen coupon redeemer can summon the coupon this powerful. Suddenly, the ground shakes in a devastating tremor, and Exodia, Pharaoh King of Power, emerges. He's a giant golden god, and he's ripped as fuck. Salom, Exodia shouts. His voice sends a primal mortal fear down your spine. It is I, Exodia, your ex-lover. Oh my goddess, Salom, did you fuck Exodia? <laughs> This fucking game, I'm leaving so hard, you guys. I grew up watching, like, the first few seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh! So I'm nerding so hard right now. <laughs> Technomage Grim, thank you so much for the seventh month resub. Thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. It really means a lot to me, and I'm so glad that you could join us tonight. Take a seat, enjoy yourself, and enjoy this magnificent, magnificent game. And thank you so much for your continued support. Of course I did. Why do you think they called him Exodia? He's my ex, and I love puns. I accidentally cheated on him 18 times, and he got super pissed for some reason. So I banished him away. I sealed his soul into five coupons, never to be released. But Brian has released me from my dark prison, and now I have a bunch of, cu a bunch of coupons from when we dated, and I want to redeem them. <laughs> Serves you right, Salon. You can use a taste of your own lube flavored medicine. But can you two handle this somewhere else? We're in the middle of a vegan picnic. Of course. Exodia respects personal space and boundaries, shrieks Exodia. Oh, he's a pretty cool guy. Thanks for your help, Brian. I don't think Salon's going to bother us anytime soon. Should we get back to our romantic picnic now? Yes, you made Joy super happy. You also gain plus three boldness from an unrelated shenanigan that happens after your picnic. Nice. Can I just skip turn and take a nap? Uh, let's do the fun one. Because I think we've done all the other options as well. So yeah, let's do the fun one again. You want to go swimming, but it seems like the god of the lake is in a bit of a mood today and demands an offering before you can get in the water. The only thing you have to give is your favorite yo-yo, which you're playing with on your way there. 
The god of the lake accepts your humble gift and is actually kind of relieved you didn't leave something boring like a dead fish or the soul of an immortal. So in addition to gaining access to the lake, the god blesses you with plus two fun. Later you meet up with Joy. She said she wanted to spend the day, just the two of you. Your knees feel weak, but that might be the polio you recently contracted. Oh, hey. Thanks for meeting me here, Brian. I wanted to apologize for all the drama with my exes lately. You've been so understanding and I've been doing some thinking. Before Joy can finish, a strange purple slime hole opens up right in front of you. There are palpable waves of angst and resentment radiating out of, radiating out of it. Oh shit. Wow. My 14-year-old anime weave-loving Tumblr-obsessed heart is in love. He... There's just this... This character design is awakening something in me that I haven't felt in a long-ass time. He is the king of the hot topic. Like, I agree the previous one was definitely, like, I loved her character design. But this one is just like, oh, like, if if I was a 14-year-old, like, or, like, if I was me as a teenager playing this. Yes. Ooh. Or it's like half the guys I used to play Vampire the Masquerade with, to be honest. <laughs> This guy needs to make sure he doesn't cut himself on those edges. Absolutely, Talon. Absolutely. Well, well, well. Hang on. I need to. I need to pick a good voice. Well, well, well. If it isn't my ex-girlfriend Joy Johnson Jajima, also known as the witch who drowned my heart in the, the obsidian ink of emotional betrayal. Hey, Gerard. Oh my God, his name is Gerard. I can't. I can't even with this game. Just. Teenage Steph is in love. God damn. Oh, hey Gerard. It's nice to see you too, I guess. What are you doing here and uh, how are you doing? Psh, I'm not okay, I promise. <laughs> I'm so at odds, I can't even. I grew up on My Chemical Romance and I am just, I, I can't. I can't, I can't do this, you guys. In the dark of twilight, I was looking into the mirror and I did not like what I saw. So I began online shopping for the darker shade of black eyeliner available. And I saw this post on my Insta feed. You're with Salom now, Joy? Seriously. Yet another one of your ice cold treasons of passion. Another stab in the heart. Mm. Holy shit, I am this close to deleting my Instagram. Not that it's any of your business, Gerard, but no, I'm not with Salon. I didn't give her permission to post that. Whatever. You're just deceiving me. Again. It reminds me of when I was a young boy. And my father took me into the city to see a marching band. I'm sorry. I'm just so full of, like... Emotions with this guy, so much so that I saw my webcam jump. <laughs> when I was a young boy, my father <laughs> took me into the city. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm overwhelmed with the what my chem feelings. A lying whore named Joy. Hey, even though this guy clearly has an amazing fashion sense, you've got to step in. Or tell you tell Gerard he needs to be respectful to Joy, or you'll give him polio. You're defending this soulless wench. Heal my, hear my tale of woe. Idiot. I consumed 1,891 living souls and became the most powerful necromancer in the universe. Just to impress Joy. And he, she responds by getting all mad at me for killing innocents and then cheating on me with some two-bit horny warlockless. Joy is a cheater. 
This guy's me and my emo face didn't kill off. Like, honestly, he's like emo, like, god tier emo goals for me as well. <laughs> Gerard, listen to me. I get why you're mad. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I was wrong to cheat on you when we were dating and I'm sorry. But we dated a long time ago. It's been years since we broke up and the coven defeated you. I think it's unhealthy that you're still completely fixated on this. Not suited for TV. And also, I would appreciate it if you could stop commenting cheating ho with a rotten black heart on everything I post. Hmm. Perhaps you're right. I haven't feasted on an innocent soul in many fortnights. It's not like me. I'm losing interest in my hobbies. Oh, thank you for the hydrate check. Don't Deadpool much appreciated. Mm. Since you are the grand architect of my pain, I expect you'll have some method to sew my shattered psyche back together. Oh, and thank you for the stretch check, Baroness. Much. Oh. Oh, thank you, thank you. I guess it's the least I can do. Brian and I will help you move on by. Uh, um, any ideas, Brian? Get Gerard a date. Getting laid won't heal his broken heart completely, but hey, it's a start. Or, it's time to get even. Join Gerard to play Monopoly together and Gerard should be allowed to cheat. Fair's fair. Okay, that's probably maybe smartness or creativity. Honestly, our stats are all really fucking good, so we can't really go wrong. I'm thinking that one might be more charm, but, um... I'd be happy to volunteer as option one, though. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Baron, you and I are on the same boat with this one. Number one seems like boldness or charm. I think it may be leaning more towards charm. Lower one maybe could be smartness or creativity. Hmm. Okay, Gerard a day, getting laid won't heal his broken heart completely, but hey, it's a start. I think that definitely might be leaning more into charm. I'm gonna go with two. It's time to get even. Joy and Gerard should play Monopoly together, and Gerard should be allowed to cheat. Fair's fair. Oh, that was fun, and we still managed to do it. Monopoly? I don't know, Brian. Cheating in a broad board game isn't really equivalent to cheating in a relationship. I don't want to diminish Gerard's feelings. Joy is really, really good. I love her. Psh, nonsense. Monopoly is a genius idea. Nothing is more cold and heartbreaking than Monopoly, capitalism's favorite board game. You buy a copy of Monopoly, breakup edition from Amazon, same day, deliver same day delivery. You all start to play with the special house rule that Gerard can cheat as much as he wants. On your first turn, you get hit with some super nasty student debt loans and go bankrupt almost immediately. It's down to Joy and Gerard. <laughs> For my next move, I will I shall employ my necromantic teleportation magic and move my little top hat 18 spaces to the Pennsylvania Railroad. After robbing the bank, I have plenty of money to purchase this property, which means I own all four railroads. Tremble before me. Oh, okay, it's my turn. And I rolled a four, so I pass go and get two hundred dollars. Oh ho <laughs> ho. I don't think so, Joy. My sources tell me that you rolled a three. You're going straight to jail, right where you belong. Damn it, I realized he's allowed to cheat, but this is frustrating. I always lose when I pick the car. You play for four hours because Monopoly takes forever to finish. Shit. Well, I'm completely bankrupt and destitute. Poverty has crushed my spirits. You win, Gerard. Take that, Joy. I'm the capitalism king. You are ruined. Evil wins again. <laughs> Gerard is so excited about winning that he melts into a puddle of purple slime and disappears. You... did it? Impressive. Wow, that was the happiest I've seen Gerard in... Actually, that's the happiest I've ever seen him. And I gotta admit, Monopoly is a dumb game, but it actually had a little bit to lose so hard, knowing that he was cheating the whole time. Hmm. I guess that was the point, huh? Wait, did your dumb Monopoly idea actually help me become a better person? I underestimated you. <laughs> huh. You're weirdly the best, Brian. Thanks. I may have underestimated you. you. Spend the whole day with Joy. She ends up casting a healing spell on you. It cures your polio and gets you plus three boldness. That's the magic of capitalism, baby. The last day of summer is here. I think we have a shot. 
So, Joy, do you want to do you want to go and be my summer love with me? Please. I, I think we could stand a good chance. Also, these two are actually kind of cute together. I kind of dig it. Like, just like even like aesthetically, like the little green accents that she has on her design and Brian's like zombie swagger, like. Yes. Secret to winning every game of Monopoly. Never buy hotels. It's more, no more houses other people can't build and you can have slightly developed properties while nobody has uh, any developed properties. Hold the green coat just like a dragon. I'll keep that in mind next time I play Monopoly with my family. <laughs> Come on. Ask Joy to go to the media shower. Guys, I think we can do this. Yes. Go to check on your favorite witch. Hey, Brian. What? You want to watch the media shower together? Um. Oh, no! I'm grateful for all your help these past few days, but I never really imagined us in that way. But now that you bring it up, I've got to admit, I do like you quite a bit. Come on! I guess there wasn't that initial passionate sparks, you know? Like a fire that lights in you, which you want to destroy someone. But also, fuck their brains out. It happened with Axarax, Salom, Gerard, Dimitri, Liam, when he was Angelus. Liam was formerly known as Angelus, that's interesting. Come to think, I sort of seem to have a pattern. And looking at it now, it doesn't seem super healthy. Do I always look for sexual partners in my enemies? Why? Looking at it from a distance. It seems like I sabotage myself, always entangling with evil people who don't exactly rhyme with commitment. But maybe I could break the cycle. Hmm. Would you want to break that cycle with me? Do you even need to answer? <laughs> the media shower arrives and you share it with joy. You wonder if you may live to become an evil ex. The thought frightens you, but it's there. But what can we do besides try our best while we dive into the mortifying idea of being known? The fear is there, real and blunt, but if we eventually fail them, in time, we will learn from every error. So tonight, you just hold hands with joy while gazing at the starry night and wondering about your shared future. It starts slowly, but it speeds up as she's excited by the prospects of a new, less complicated way of doing things. And you... I have a spell you may like. Enjoy it, guys. You're deeply under her spell. You see her. You truly see her. A mesmerizing woman who loves unapologetically. A kind soul who's not afraid to lead with power and compassion. A deeply complex person who carries the weight of the world on her shoulders. Someone that in the moments that she, when she alleviates herself from all those responsibilities, can also be the true embodiment of joy. I'm gonna ha redeem that hydrate check in vodka if that's okay with you, essentially. Mm. Yes, fuck yes. Hey, we actually succeeded in a romance option. I'm so proud of us, you guys. Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. Telen, I haven't caught my white whale yet. I tried at the start of the stream, but I wasn't successful. It felt like a hot minute, and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night we saw a summer coming to an end. We all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older, and I can see it. How those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies, sung for centuries. Wild nights became epics, treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. Even today, I can still close my eyes and I'm there. On that last summer night. Feeling like I was just starting to live life. with all my friends around that campfire. 
so young and unafraid and so ready to start. I love this game. I think the dialogue from Dragon Age Inquisition fits this romance a little bit. Well, you two seem to be make each other happy. And surely you're not ending this on a complimentary note. I was just wondering how you would imagine your future. The Inquisitor and the... Well, whatever you are now. Ah, uh, I see. Because you think uh, you think we're a poor match. Lady Vivian. The woman there stands will stand with Thetis' mightiest because of who she is. She may choose whoever she pleases. Even an undeserving nobody. Envy her ability to love freely. But recognize that envy is what it is. I, I do love Joy. She's wonderful. And I'm glad we were actually successful in that romance. Um... I think we are going to be wrapping up the stream here, guys. So, next time, I think I'm going to try and honestly just kind of keep romancing, uh, like, keep playing this game until I'm lucky enough to romance Milo. The more we play it, the I think the closer we're going to get. I was so close this time around. But, honestly, we still have Calculesta and Aravi to romance. So, let's try and do all the romance options while I still pursue my white whale that is uh, Milo. <laughs> And this is a good note to end it on. We were successful in romancing Joy. We got that little glorious moment of uh, <laughs> that wonderful, wonderful photo that I think everyone enjoyed. I certainly did. And we had some gorgeous evil exes to admire. And I'm not tired of this game by any means, so... Yes. Let us try and do all of the romance options. I meant what I said. And let's just see how far we get. <laughs> but like, this was fantastic. I love this game so much. I love all these characters so much. We're just going to do the wrap up once we get back to the main menu and just admire the rest of this amazing credit sequence that I love so much. Joy, it was a delight to romance you. You have the weight of the world on your shoulders and we are glad to be by your side. <laughs> Salom, 10 out of 10. Absolutely. She was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> But I will be streaming this Sunday, so I really hope you're able to join me for that, guys. Hey, Big Bad King Boom Boom. We're actually just wrapping up tonight's stream, but thank you so much for dropping by. <laughs> uh, Salon was god goddamn gorgeous, and yes. I hope this isn't the last time we've seen of her. You've just unlocked the screwdriver. Hell yes. Ooh, and Hexaland. That looks good. Promising. And we can now chug holy water. I'm totally down for this. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining me tonight, guys, for another round of Monster Camp. I hope you join me next Friday for another round of Monster Camp in which I continue to pursue my magnificent white whale that is Milo. I will successfully re uh, seduce them at some point, but fingers crossed for next time. <laughs> But thank you so much for joining me tonight, guys. I will absolutely be streaming this Sunday for the next chapter of Valhalla. So I really hope you're able to join me for that. If you've been lurking in the shadows and you like what you've seen so far, please consider hitting that follow button. We would love to have you back at the Blue Rose Respite. I would really love to one day be able to do streaming full time. So every time you guys join me for another stream, we just get that little bit closer. Feel free to share my channel around with friends, family, anyone that you think that you think might enjoy being a part of the Blue Rose Respite and joining us on Fridays and Sunday nights. Be sure to check out my Twitch channel, uh, sorry, my Twitter for spur of the moment updates and other fun shenanigans and my YouTube channel for other amazing content that I am posting. My new video will be out next, uh, sorry, tomorrow evening and I hope you will enjoy it. 
But thank you so much for joining me tonight. I had a ton of fun with this. I hope you did too. Thank you so much for the bit drops, for the subscriptions, for all of the Hydro checks because my god, I need a lot of them in this game. <laughs> Ah, oh, but thank you so much for joining me tonight, guys. I had a wonderful, wonderful time. I hope you all did as well. And we're almost at the end of 2020, guys. We just have to make it through the next month or so. And we just have to take it one day at a time. And that's all we can do. But we're going to get through this together, guys. And take these words to heart now more than ever. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And, as always, stay wicked and wonderful. <laughs> Good night, guys.